Welcome everybody to day number three of the Adam Cast at Major League Table Tennis. This is the third and final day of East Meets West. The first time in the history of the very first ever professional American League where the East Division and the West Division have collided. We've got a lot of excitement for you today, starting off with the teams, the Chicago Wind versus Seattle Spinners of the East Chicago Wind and of the West. Seattle Spinners, we're coming to you live from Rock Hill Sports Complex in Rock Hill, South Carolina. If you're anywhere that a plane or a car or a jet can get you here within the next few hours, don't miss this opportunity. We've got right now and we've got again at local time, 2.30 p.m. today. So, lots to look forward to. What do we have here in terms of the team standings in the East Division, Chicago Wind at the bottom of the food chain with 118 points. And on the other side, Seattle Spinners 120 in second place, not too shabby. So, looking to get out of that fourth place in the East and move on up. Chicago Wind is gonna be hungry right now, salivating, just drooling and dripping, ready for points on the table. And number two looking to climb into the number one spot. The top two teams in each division will advance at the end of the 14 week season. We're only halfway through the season. It's a special event right now for the East meets West, the Adam cast. So welcome to the booth. I'm your commentator, Adam Bobro, and my good friend, three-time national team member for the Kiwis down in New Zealand, Matt Hetherington. Good to have you here, Matt. Okay, great to be here. Thanks for having me, Adam. What's the story with this uh, Wheel of Fortune looking wheel behind us? Well, it's making me pretty nervous. There's a lot of different things. I don't know how often we're going to spin this wheel or how this works, but there are some interesting uh, challenges for us on there. So what I'm going to tell you is, if you're watching this, it's a good thing. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tell your friends to do the same. We're going to be looking at the comments section quite often. And I'll answer your questions as often as possible. But I'm going to tell you, from time to time, we're going to spin this challenge wheel. We've got some really interesting challenges here, just to uh, wet your taste buds a little bit. <laughs> We've got trivia. We can ask trivia questions for you guys. We've got... Audience chooses punishment, where you get to choose in the comment section what we have to do as commentators. Pop culture references for an entire game, only pop culture references. Wow. Switch personalities with co-hosts, so Matt will be me and I will be Matt. We'll do our best on that. I think I'm a pretty easy one to impersonate, though. Let's see. No English. That shouldn't say five minutes. That should say <laughs> one minute. No way. No English for one mi uh, Okay, no erase. That five minutes equals one minute. Thanks for the eraser. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. You're on the wrong side. Oh, I was going to erase the S, too. Look at me with my grammar. It doesn't even work. It's not coming okay, off. Okay, five minutes equals so one minute. Amazing. For the rest of the broadcast, it's going to be in a language you choose. No. Okay, so no English for one minute. Commentate only in questions for a game. Wow. So this is interesting. And Matt, we're going to get you a little closer to me so people can enjoy your lovely face. I do. All right. So a lot to look forward to here. We've got Damien Provost from France, a left-hander who's as casual as can be, and a left-hander, <clears throat> excuse me, a left-hander who's a two-time back-to-back defending U.S. national champion who's anything but calm. He's a warrior, the most confident guy I know, Nikhil Kumar. So this will be interesting. Seattle spinners are going to start with the serve for Nikhil Kumar. Could have gone better. That said, a little reminder, can't go much better for you between the wheel behind us and we've got giveaways. I'll tell you more about that, but make sure you follow on Instagram, Major League Table Tennis. It's a good start. I know this is actually the matchup that Nikhil wanted for this match. He was, seemed pretty eager to play against Damien. I think pace-wise, he's hoping he can disrupt a little bit. But Damien's like very steady. So I think we've already seen Damien play slow and sometimes Nikhil kind of rushes a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, I feel like he's not the type to be rhythm broken. No. <laughs> Damien is the rhythm breaker. He's not phased by almost anything, it seems. Well, that's a fun question from Hannes Rumpo. If I remember correctly, Hannes Rumpel said he was 70 yesterday, so who was world champion when he started playing table tennis? Well, if you started 
around 14 years old. <laughs> Stellan Bankston. Nice, oh, too late. It has to be too late. 71? Yeah. All right. Oh, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. So Nikhil Kumar, not a bad start, but dead even. So I guess the same could be said for Damian Provost. Oh, well done. It was Stellan. No way. <laughs> what are the, that is incredible. We need Trivia's to spin a wheel. done already now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we should, that needs a celebration for, what are the odds? That was just well calculated. <laughs> <laughs> that was ridiculously lucky. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm taking the headset off and going home. <laughs> Good backhand here inside the table. Nikhil reaching in and jabbing this one out. Touch shot. And then a quick flick of the wrist with that seemingly punchy shot, but just that snap at the end to generate more spin. You know, the Chicago Wind have had two good wins already this weekend, so... They were at the bottom of the table on the east. They've started creeping up a little bit. And completely overall, the number eight team in the entire league. Because I said the same thing. I said, oh, yeah, you guys are number four in the east, right? And Audra was like, we're number eight of eight. Right. Like, ah. I think right now they've moved ahead of Portland and Texas. So not a bad weekend for them so far. Yeah. It's so chilling to me, I love it. Speaking of chilling, the way that he is chilling out here, Damian Provost, he just seems so calm. When he misses, he gets frustrated, he shows his emotions, which I personally like. Take a look here from the side, pendulum serve. Nikhil trying to keep it short, but the top spin on the serve, it seemed, helped the ball pop up for a nice third ball attack. Six points dead even. See Justin from the Myrtle Beach Table Tennis Club down there in the corner. Had a nice conversation last night about the mental game of table tennis. Well, he's definitely causing some trouble with the rhythm. Yeah. It seemed like an impossible feat. How do you do that against Damian Provost? But Damian seems a little bit rattled right now. Score very close at the moment. Smart play, a little bit of a head fake, patiently waiting for the ball to go behind. Welcome all to the live chat. Thanks for asking. We're doing great. I think it's the best I felt in days. I'm, I'm definitely glad about that. Yeah. You've hung in there like an absolute hero across this weekend. It's very sweet of you. Thank you. Seven points apiece now. Tied up once again. Tight serve here from Damian Provost. Hello, David Souza. How to dominate left-handed players? Good question. Well, that's one way. I think in general, for me, I like to serve long to the backhand until someone proves that they have a good receive. That bottle challenge serve can be effective. And if you notice that they like to step around and play the forehand, quickly yeah. exploit the wide forehand. A lot of lefties like to turn that corner, so the wide forehand will be left open. Oh, speaking of which. Is Nikhil tuning in for the Adam cast or what? Must be. <laughs> I think maybe, we should... maybe they have the volume on down on that TV down there. That's right. They can see. We, yesterday we tried to influence some calls. We did this on screen. We're like, no, it didn't touch. <laughs> Aggression recognizing the opportunity for a more passive shot floated up here. It's very difficult to keep the ball short pushing from behind the table, let alone even the baseline would have been tough enough. So two game points for Nikhil Kumar. I think we should ask that question to you as a left-handed player. What do you find most challenging? Uh, definitely wide forehand. That's always a problem area. I mean, both of these guys will stay on the backhand corner a lot. Um, they look for chances to step around, and because you're always waiting for that ball, you kind of have to leave your wide forehand exposed a little, um, especially with Nikhil, who plays kind of anchors on his backhand getting him away from it first before you play into it. So short forehand receive first. I mean, lefty against lefty. If I'm playing an another left-hander, short reverse pendulum serve to the forehand is always good for me just to get it really close to the forehand edge. All right, well, there you have it. Now you should never lose to a left-handed player again, no matter their level. Shushin, Timo, Bo, Lingao, Yuan, doesn't matter. Except, except for me, as a courtesy. Yeah, <laughs> you owe Matt that. 
Nikhil Kumar demonstrating what a left-hander can do and how to do it against a left-hander as he steps around and drives it. But this is the game of table tennis, right? Evaluating risk, risk assessment in any given moment. You might have your favorite shot, but if your favorite shot leaves you exposed for a counter to come back, it might not be the time to take it. All right. Oh, thank you, Exile. It's very nice. How often do you guys think we should spin the wheel right in the comments section? I don't want it to become too often because we want to make sure we give you real information, but I am excited to give it a try. Hmm. We could do it at the end of each match. End then of each match? Because how many different things do we have on here? If we want to try and hit all of them. I'm going to say there six. There are five matches. There's seven, six. The colors are interesting because we've got four reds. And everything else is only two. So I'm going to go two, six, seven, 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 seven. seven. They're 14 on a wheel? What an unusual wheel. Can you imagine if that were a pizza and somebody cut a 14 slice pizza? That'd be way too much work, just not highly productive. In this country, yes, I could definitely imagine it. <laughs> it's not healthcare, it's pizza. All right, here we go. 1 0. Damien starting off well with his serves. I think he has to be more aggressive. I, like, Nikhil was, I think, a little bit more aggressive than usual in the opening game. And Damien was on the back foot a little bit, more passive. I've got a story about Nikhil that I think our viewers are going to like. Two, the short story is one, he beat me in an official tournament when he was 11 years old and I was the top seed in that event. That's the less interesting story. The more interesting story is, at this past national championships for the U.S., Nikhil told me before the match, this is going to be the shortest best of seven match you've ever seen. And I was like, can I say that? Can I tell the audience? He goes, not until it's over. Game number one against Jishan was tight. The next three were not at all. Right. It was the fastest best of seven match I think I've ever seen. For and some, he called it. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, he just feels overwhelmingly comfortable and confident playing against Jishan. <laughs> he was so determined that day. He had a lot left to prove, I think, coming back after injury. And not necessarily to anyone else, just to himself. This is a player, you know, for, for American players, players in the U.S., there's this dilemma. Do I have to get serious about life? Do I have to go make money? Should I pursue a career? So when you get to that college age, people start taking it a little bit lightly. They start focusing on job opportunities. But now with MLTT, the goal is, this is an incredible job opportunity for you to get your family out of the hood, whatever it is, feed kids and grandkids with your lucrative career. Good guidance there. The parallel with the backhand has started off. There it is. And he immediately, yeah, got to love it. Immediately had Damien sort of chasing. Thanks, Jack. Glad you're here. <laughs> Abakan, all right, cool. Keep our eyes open for that. I, uh, the frustration. <laughs> <Dramatic>. <laughs> I love Dramatic this reaction. Response. I, uh. Can you show us all? <laughs> Matt, do that real quickly. Uh, I need to save that for the wheel. That's right. If there's something on there. Beautiful chop block to set it up. Just side and underspin. There it is. And a common response to a chop block is just pushing it back. It's not easy to be aggressive against it. All right, Mitali, thank you so much for that. Jack, appreciate it. Wow, I thought Damien played it perfectly from under the table with a very shallow spin shot to get into the point, but he wasn't phased. Nikhil on the other side held his ground, moved right back in and got aggressive. Interesting, interesting. Two points in front here. Damien starting off on the stronger foot at the second towel break. I think one of the things about Damien is that you just never notice him either creeping up or creeping ahead of you in the scoreline. Yeah. He's just <laughs> unsuspecting. You know, Nikhil right now looks like he's the one doing all the work. But Damien's the one winning most of the points in this game. Yeah, it is very deceptive, misleading even. His body language, his sort of vibe on the table. 
Interesting challenge already from Valiant in the comments section. Can you describe Sharath Kamalachanta in three words, Adam, just for fun? Hero. Warrior. Charming. I think he'd take that. I think of him as a role model, but I couldn't think of one good word for role model. Anyway. So 10 to 5, quickly racing ahead the last three in a row. Four, I guess, from 6-5 up, and a long serve from Nikhil makes it one game apiece. So, Chicago wind on the scoreboard now. Just a little reminder, if you're joining us for the first time today, five matches will be played. I'll just tell you this, no problem. Five matches, two singles, one doubles, two singles. Each match has three games. All three games will be played because each game is worth one team point. So if anyone goes up 2-0, hey, Justin's on court. He's one of our ball kids. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love the footwear. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's got amazing footwear. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so it's like, have you seen Kung Fu Hustle? Oh, yeah. I, I, lo I love that movie. Amazing movie. Love it. It sounds funny to say, and I won't talk about it for the entire broadcast, but the love story in that movie for me is like it brings me to tears every time, even though it's maybe five minutes of the movie. It's just the most heartbreaking, touching love story amongst all of the comedy and amazing folklore. But Justin reminds me of uh, the man with the tank top. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give anything away for people who haven't seen Kung Fu Hustle. Don't watch it until the broadcast is over. I'll tell you one thing. If you do watch it, make sure you watch it in Cantonese with English subtitles. That's like the essence of the movie is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so 15 points because three points per game for the teams to fight over. 15 points total before the golden game. Every game is win by one. There is no deuce. At 10-10, it is golden point. If I were emceeing, I'd say, you know what it is. Say it with me. We'd all go golden points as a I'm stadium. I'm going to be doing that later on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the brushing, bending backhand. The kill, a bit of frustration here. Not able to quite get the contact he wanted. Good placement there, Damien, right in that crossover point, the middle. Oh, good D, but the wide corners. Nikhil really painting the corners of the table from an inside-out forehand to a complete rip to the very corner of the table there. High-risk shots. Those could have easily missed. Hmm. Yeah, Stephen Chow, the director and star. Amazing. Wow, he has such good control on his backhand side. Just looks unfazed. It feels like Nikhil just trying to change things up over and over, but I feel like Damien, like an elephant's trunk, just has a few more joints. He's able to just hold and then sort of snap the wrist when he needs. Heavy rotation, but well read by Nikhil as he rips through it. Good to have you back, Neo B. Najim, good question. I still will. I'm going to Japan next week, and I'll be commentating the uh, Women's Cup Finals. Ooh, nice placement. Half long, leaving it right near that back edge. This will be the perfect view of how long this ball is. Little bit of room. I guess Nikhil wanted to catch it early rather than on its way down right near the baseline. I guess there just haven't been so many opportunities for me with WTT this year. A lot of the big events didn't happen, so looking forward to more next year and at the end of this year. Hello to you in Russia. Thanks for tuning in. Counter almost comes down. Damien waiting patiently for his opportunity to really explode. Look how straight up it looks like he's standing until he yeah. decides to lunge for it. It's funny. I have this issue big time, standing up way too oh, straight. Too. Yeah. But as a professional, Damien is one of few who seemingly can sort of get away with it. It's how yeah. good his feeling and control is. I think if you look at, like, the taller players, um, like Osangan and Samsonov. Right. They're a little bit, they're upright, but they're tall anyway. 
but they play really well in topspin rallies over the top of the ball. And so I think that's kind of the way that Damien plays as well. Right. It's like you just get leverage on top of the ball more. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I don't really like to acknowledge haters, but it's funny when someone's representing like two people. Anyway, good times, good times. So a timeout here, they've switched sides as one player has reached five points. So the score will be flipped here. Nikhil trailing two to five. So after this game, we're gonna spin the wheel behind us. The wheel of fun, I'm gonna call it. A lot of fun challenges on there. Good length on the push from Nikhil Kumar. I feel like Nikhil's been kind of hyper aggressive throughout most of this match. Did you expect that from the start? No. He's usually good at kind of balancing risk. But he's really gone for some strong points. And I feel like when he goes back to being passive now, Damien's been able to win most of those points. Ooh, back edge here for Damien. Chipping shot, very tough to recover with this change of trajectory after it catches the edge. Doesn't miss by much, but pretty big deal at this level. Good placement deep to the backhand, catching Damien off guard, not easy to do. Nice flick, a little bit of inside out, bend to the wrist. Good question, would you say this league is competitive, Najim? Ah, timeout on the other side as well. All right. It's a conservative timeout. I would say this league is quite competitive. I mean, yeah. if you saw the ESPN Ocho Day, it was a bit more of an exhibition, but after that, everything has been incredibly competitive. And the level, I mean, we've got Adi Sarin here, who is recently 37 in the world, Amy Wong and Lily yeah. Jong, I mean, both inside the top 40. I know Lily at least was at what, 24 20, or something 20, in the world? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere Three, up there. Right in there. Yeah. I but mean, the thing is, like, on any given day, any player could beat any player. And we've had so many matches go all the way to the end of the Golden Game and literally be won by one point. So that's about as competitive as it gets, really. Right. The format, to me, is brilliant. It is made, it is a Hollywood movie on screen for sports. It is the most exciting format you could imagine. If you haven't seen a Golden Game before, you must stay for it. If you leave before the, the golden game, you are missing the climax of the film. Oh, yeah. The whole point, it comes down to the golden game. Almost every team match is won by the golden game. Yeah. That said, we had a record-breaking dominant performance by Carolina Gold Rush with a 20-1 to victory. But even if a team gets 11 points before another team, we still play the golden game because it's not how many matches you win or team matches. It's how many points you collect by the end of the season. And if you place as one of the top two in your division to advance to the playoffs. You know, in Pickleball, they have a similar format and they call it the Dream Breaker. You mentioned that. Yeah. Two points between them, Damien's still up, but right out of the timeout, the timeout has been diffused. Nikhil Kumar continuing on his way. <laughs> That's pretty tricky. Made the ball come back to himself, spun it on his fingertips. We'll see that after the game, maybe. Exile 29, for sure. You represent a lot of people by loving the Golden Game. Hey, Paul Dunn, good to have you here. Chop block sat up a little high. Damien was able to come in. If it's closer to the net and it's high enough, people will confidently attack it. But a low chop block, not easy to attack. Najim, right decision. Definitely stay for that golden game. Ooh, this is a pretty fast push. So it was an aggressive push. Very little spin on it, fast to the backhand. Two oh, bounces no. on the table! The most clever shot we've seen. A lot of pressure with all the drop shots Nikhil does. Fakes the attack, <laughs> goes drop. Wow, that is a highlight. That is IQ 200 play right there. 
and feeling 300. On what scale, I don't know, the IQ scale, I guess. <laughs> wow, Nikhil within one point. I feel like he's coming back to his game right here at the end. I mean, that rally is like everything that Nikhil would play in a match. Wow. Good question there about how the playoffs are structured. I'll answer that in a moment. Oh, it was a good shot block. Yeah, Nikhil earned himself. Yeah, he got the push back long. It's so tough when you get a long push, the shot you were hoping for and you can't convert. And I think that's why Damien celebrated because he knew he escaped something that he wasn't oh, yeah. in the best position in. So two game points and coming up next, we've got Dan Liu for USA, also Chicago Wind and Andrew Tsao, 16 year old up and comer for the US. And Damian Provost takes it two to one. So Chicago Wind off to a good start over the Seattle Spinners. Getting low, that was the lowest that I've was, seen Damian get this whole match. <laughs> wow, so quick answer to the playoffs question. Because it will be single elimination at the playoff stages, I don't think the golden game will be guaranteed. It'll just be first team to 11, but it'll be fairly unlikely, tough to say. It seems likely that it would go to a golden game because it's worth six points. Yeah. That's sort of the brilliance of how the league was structured. Matt, how do you feel? Nervous. Okay. I feel like I'm in a golden game right now. I'm going to drink some water. I'm ready when you are. You can spin. Yeah, I'm going to do the spin. Oh, boy. So whatever, whatever happens here is on me, really. Oh, trivia. Honestly, that is probably That's the a... easiest and maybe the least exciting. I think we should not be able to repeat. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's fair. I think we should each give one trivia question. Yeah, are we doing table tennis only, or, <laughs> or is, is this I feel like though? we should in the spirit, like mentioning other sports, for example. I'm going to try to keep it mostly table tennis. We can do that. We can, I'm, well, I'm not going to ask you who the world champion was in 1971, that's for sure. Well, we got that, right? Okay, do you want to do the first trivia question? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, okay, can you name all of the Grand Slam champions, male and female. Whoa. Okay, keeping an eye on the comments section. Keeping an eye on the comments section. Grand Slam champions in table tennis, which is interesting because this, this had been a thing for a while. I know WTT is not keeping track of this so much, but before right. WTT, if you won the Olympics, you won a World Cup, and you won the World Championships, that is a Grand Slam. But it has to be, that's it. If you've won those three, yeah. that's it. So men and women, all of them, yeah. name them. Yeah. Looking at the comments section. Other than that, one thing you should know, since I forgot to do it after the second game in the first match, giveaway. It is time for a giveaway. So follow at Major League Table Tennis on Instagram and direct message us. Hashtag AdamCast. Us being Major League Table Tennis, shoot a direct message to them. Hashtag AdamCast and you'll be eligible for an MLTT t-shirt, and they are sweet. Are they as sweet as this custom made one? Not necessarily, I see the basketball players coming over, loving it, there's a major basketball tournament behind us, so you'll hear buzzers going off from time to time. But there's a major table tennis event right in front of us, and now at the table for Chicago Wind, the Penhold sensation, who switched between shake hands and Penhold, Dan Liu with Andrew Tsao on the receive for Seattle Spinners. <laughs> Somebody wrote <laughs> Djokovic. <laughs> I mean, he is a Grand Slam champion, just not in table tennis. Not in table tennis, true. Okay, a few good guesses there, Najim. Good counter loop action from behind the table. Dan Liu with the fast footwork. Both of these players for me are very fast on their feet, comfortable in the counter loop rally. For me, this is going to have a lot of electric rallies. Yeah, so actually yesterday... Dan played against Daryl Tsao and Andrew has had like a lot of good matches against the other youth players in the league from the US um, and Daryl's like quite strong against them as well but I think Dan has experience because he's played on the west coast with so many different students around that level um, he just upped his game and he really needed the win and we talked to him afterwards in the post-match interview he was like this is great for my confidence. <laughs> 
Oh, Andrew Tsao with a backhand chop from behind the table. Not a common thing to see, but from the position he was in, didn't feel comfortable to put much topspin on it. And Dan Liu taking advantage of a ball that stayed closer to the net. Hey, thanks, A. Hey, Gelevan. So it's interesting. We've got a hybrid of names there. Yeah. There's some in there that are correct, and there are some that are not correct. So I'll let you handle it, but uh, Liu Guoliang is the name of a player who would yep. fall into that category. Lin Guoliang would be a combination of two different people's names, <laughs> at least in the table tennis world. So I've seen Ma Long and Ding Ning, definitely. Deng Yeping, yes. Zhang Jika, who had all of them at the same time, which is great. Fastest ever in history. Yep, Waldner's in there. Uh, Kong Ling Hui. Li Xiao Sha is in there. Wang Nan, Mega Boy, just crushing it. <laughs> yeah, man. Boyd's hardcore. I love it. Um, who are we missing? So Najim, in terms of Liu Shiwen, has she won the Olympics in singles? No. Not yet. <laughs> Don't say not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Man, that was a fast backhand from Andrew Tsao, but with the racket high on the other side, Dan Liu counters back so quick with that wrist, the RPB. And this is a player who switched back to pen hold, but yeah. switched to shake hand because he liked the backhand more, right? Yeah, yeah, he said attacking backhand, he, like countering and attacking, he was more comfortable. But his reverse pen hold backhand is amazing sometimes. Yeah, I'm quite impressed. He seems very comfortable with it right now. Uh, somebody put Yaning. I think you mean Zhang Yining. Many consider her, I think she's one of the two that's in the constant argument for greatest of all time in the women's game. Deng Yaping for me, Zhang Yining, those are the two. Yeah, I think we got all of them. I think, I hope we did. I would hate to miss one. <laughs> I figured I'd let you keep track, but. Yeah, I think we got them all. All right, good job team. Good team effort, I like it. It's sort of the same spirit of the league here. If you can win as a team in doubles in the golden game, it really matters. We've got teams that have winning records in singles, but losing records as a team. Right. And the Chicago wins one of them. Right. Someone asked in the chat, I think yesterday, what is it about Chicago wind in the golden game? I said, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe they need to show up a few days early, go out for pizza or hot pot or something as a team just to sort of bond a little bit more. Yeah. Wow. We, we had the chance to talk to Eric Owens, obviously. He actually won on this table, so didn't have the. He wanted the post-match interview really bad, uh, and then they won again last night. Um, and it was the first chance that I've had to talk to him really at all. And so I asked about the Golden Game, and um, he was like, "Yeah, of course. Obviously, it's been a big, a big issue for them. Um, but they have been practicing some things, like practicing Golden Game sequences, oh, cool, um, things like that, to try and get themselves over the line, so to speak." Well, I hope we get him up here. Uh, we can let him know I'm feeling better today than I've felt in the last three days, and uh, maybe he'll come sit next to me and we can have a chat with him. Thank you for all the kind comments. I greatly appreciate it. Good to have you here. There is an official ball of MLTT. Butterfly is our sponsor, so we're using the R40+. Plus. Oh, what a counter here. Side and topspin, adding insult to injury. Andrew Tao. Oh, man, it's so pretty. The way he contacted it way out in front while still moving to the side, reaching forward, accomplishing a lot in that quick moment. He's actually been incredibly impressive in the league, and he's actually seventh right now on the Major League Table Tennis standings. This is a good question here. Emma Heaton, how come they wear the same shirt? Are they in the same team? The shirts are not exactly the same, but they're close enough that it is confusing. I agree. They should not wear such similar shirts. I think that will be an issue solved by the second season. Yeah. I think you should have a home and away jersey or whatever it is so that it's very clear to tell who's on which team. But we'll remind you, Chicago Wind, the team that is the blue in the bottom left corner of the screen. By the way, in case the scoreboard is unclear to you, I know you might see a 700 and a 900 right now, but <laughs> those numbers actually are the three games, individual scores. So this is game one of the second singles match where the score is seven to nine. The team score, two to one, favoring Chicago Wind.
interesting question, Hannes. I doubt it. I mean, the pros are constantly traveling and playing around the world, but I don't know. I highly doubt it. I mean, there are people that make a point of just hitting as many countries as they possibly can to play table tennis. Yeah, maybe there's somebody out there who's like a traveling Will Shorts. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. If you really want to go to as many countries as possible, you don't live my life. The table tennis life for, you know, seven years of doing the world tour was mostly the same stops. Right. I'd be in Japan two times a year, China two times a year, and then Germany, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Austria, Australia. I mean, it was more or less the same lineup, so my country count isn't as high as it may seem. Good placement here, Andrew Tsao. I'll be curious, yeah, this will be a good angle for me. It sets him up with two game points. Ah, it looked to me like it clipped the top of the net on the way down, which changed the rhythm a little bit. We do see less and less apologies because of the intensity in this team spirit right now. Interesting. Nick, I love watching this too. I'm thrilled that you're here. Man. Yeah, these matches, they're close. A lot of really tight battles. Two game points for Andrew Tsao. Oh, a rip. He Man. lunges and gets everything behind this shot. Dan Liu. I mean, if you're going to push long into the backhand corner of a pen holder, you better be ready for them to step around and put the ball on blast. Yeah. One game point saved by Dan Liu of Chicago Wind on the receive. Another game point here for Andrew Tsao. The serve was smart, but Dan Liu was able to still play it short. He wanted the attack, changed his mind, and the push kept Andrew Tsao off of an aggressive attack. And now, you know what it is, oh, say yeah. it with me, golden, golden point. point. <laughs> Ahado P, I see you. Have you actually played any golden point games before yourself? Many, oh many. Yeah, pretty much every beat me win $100. Andrew Tsao with the hooking forehand takes it and ties up the series. It is two games apiece right now. Chicago wind and Seattle spinners level at 2-2. Wow, this is getting exciting. Who has the highest world ranking in this league? I think it's Amy Wong. Yeah, it would be either Amy. I think Amy moved ahead of Lily. They're pretty close. She's been ahead for a while now, I think. I think she was up at 31 and Adi Serene yeah. on the men's side, but... I think he dipped just out of the top 40. Yeah. And Lily, I think I saw, dipped down to 45, but I haven't checked the newest updates. That might updates. be right. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. there's like Margin Bowers, like 122 now. He's had a pretty good year. Then there's Cole, who was 20th before. As um, was Matilda Eckholm. Right, exactly. And you have Lachine. There's, there's a lot of great players here. It's international flavor. Yeah, a whole lot. We've got 20 different countries represented in MLTT. 40 that tried out 40 different countries came if you want to try out you think you can hang with these pros go to mltt.com get on the newsletter get on the mailing list so that you can try out when they have the uh, combines next season the combines are incredible you get a chance to play these pros test your skills so it will be interesting let's see is Shushim going to compete internationally internationally I don't know, not, not representing China at this point. I think he's only going to compete internally, but let's see. I know he loves table tennis. He's got his own club, conveniently named Superman. Superman. Be sure to tell you more about that in the not-too-distant future. Who will be the winner of this league? Well, right now it looks like Carolina Gold Rush is in the best yeah. position, but you never know because all it takes is one good day in the playoffs, and you could eliminate the top seed. It's sort of like the Olympics. Right, you yeah. You have one good match, and even someone who's been undefeated for years could suddenly be out of the running before the medal rounds. But to make it to the playoffs, Carolina Gold Rush would really have to step in a giant puddle of mud at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's how his forehand is a beast. Why is there no deuce? Good question, Pro X. I don't know, I think just to give something different, add a little bit of flair and excitement, add pressure. Yeah. For me, it's spectacular to watch the golden point every time. There's that beast forehand, but heavy spin coming in and a little bit flatter trajectory from Andrew Tsao. He also went on the parallel, so less margin for error. I also think without the deuce, it's a little bit more predictable if you're selling TV rights, which I think ultimately the goal, whether it's a live stream or TV, 
MLTT's growing smart play. He says points to the bandana. Using the bandana. Who made a world-class pun? It was you, I think. <laughs> did I? What did I say? I don't remember saying anything. Me neither. Are they, are they coming out of me that fast that I don't even notice? It? <laughs> I like playing with words. Adam the pun factory. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the forehand wind generator. The factory himself, Dan Liu, inside the table with that flick of the wrist. That's much better anticipation from Andrew Sal. I mean, he knows probably 80% of the time Dan's going to step around on that ball. This is a big part of the game, right? Recognizing your opponent, what's likely to come as soon as possible so you can prepare early and have the advantage. Oh, this is even better. So good. It's just like he was emailed. Hey, Andrew, this is Dan. I just wanted you to know that I'm going to be spinning the ball on the parallel to your forehand. Please get ready in advance. Be there. Be ready to counter. Man, looking good. Andrew Tsao. Hello to you in Lebanon. Welcome back. Lebanon's been here this weekend. Good to see you. Feel free to let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, we're happy to address. We want you to feel as in the know as possible so that you can follow with every bit of context and be as emotionally invested as possible. A long underspin, reverse pendulum serve. How often do you see that from a pen holder? That's so tough to do. I mean, the, the, rest, the range of wrist motion you need to do that pen hold is... Yeah, you really don't see that too often. I mean, just the pen, reverse pen hold serve in general. Two times in a row. One thing I do commonly say about the pen hold grip is that it gives you much more wrist flexibility. Yeah. So in theory, you should see it more, but it's just, we don't. And then we saw it twice. Ah, Frankfurt, well, two things. One, I had MLTT, which cut off my availability at, to make it from the start. And then I had a college reunion as well. Step around again, Dan Liu's forehand. This is what pen holders love, that forehand. I mean, when you think about the greatest pen holders in history, they're all forehand dominant. Yeah. That said, Wong Hao had the best RPB I've ever seen. Which doesn't take away from his forehand at all. His step around forehand was unreal. Touch game. A two point lead for Andrew Tsao. It's been interesting to see him serving backhand a lot more. He's trying to get enough side spin short to the forehand to get Dan to kind of pop up the short ball. It's clever play. He's using his brain. This is impressive. I think young players are often fearless. But the real wisdom and the clever play comes with age. Mm. It's part of the reason that Timo, even well into his 40s, uh, well, not that well, but into his 40s, has been able to not only compete with but beat top players in the world. So rumor has it that we're going to do the Wheel of Fun after this game. <laughs> Why do we play to 21? That's only the golden game. Every game is to 11 points in MLTT except the golden game. That'll be to 21 points because the entire team that played, all five active players from both sides, will come back out to play. And a woman must play in every team match. So usually they're playing in doubles just because of the level differential here. But when Lily and Amy Wong are here, as two of the strongest women, and Matilda Ekholm for that matter, they've all played in singles against male opponents. Hello, Gadget Boy. And hello from Belgium. Ah, cool. Hello to Belgium, Jokey. Ah, that forehand's so good from Andrew. Yeah, I was impressed the first one came back. Dan covered the middle, too, the placement. In the replay, the reaction time Dan Liu has is incredible, but Andrew Tsao making it that challenging. Yes, Mega Boy, <laughs> hair style and shoes as well. Wang Hao had it all. It's a beautiful step around here. Dan Liu turning the corner. Right into the box. Towel box, it's gotta be worth something in the <laughs> Street cred points category. <laughs> it's 
So Dan Liu, now with two serves to come, a chance to tie it up after Andrew Tsao took game one on golden point. Sneaks it past, quickly apologizes. You'll see acknowledgement when someone clips, either hits the edge of their racket, clips the net, back edge of the table, anything that felt a little bit lucky that wasn't intended. You'll often see players acknowledge their fortune. I didn't see what he was raising his finger for here. Maybe it was just that he got away with the points because it wasn't the most impressive push. Ball set up a little bit. Seemed like a ball that Dan Liu would make most of the time. Yeah, that's, I mean, actually the setup from the start is really good. So he's getting Dan across to the short forehand. I feel like his push into the backhand's just too slow. If he gets him all the way across to the short forehand and then he really digs in that ball quick, then it would work for him. I feel like every time he's played there, Dan's been moving quicker than the ball's getting there. Definitely a good thing to be able to do. Oh, from way behind the table and down near the ground, Dan Liu fishing and then quickly back into the counter loop game, getting low. We've seen this in the top 10 highlights on the YouTube channel for MLTT. Wow, so one game point saved, two more to go for Andrew Tsao. And then of course that golden point, should it come to that. I do not have a mute button, I have to raise the uh, <laughs> microphone there. So sorry if you ever hear me cough or clear my throat, I'll do my best. Not to give you that, we've got a wheel spin coming up relatively soon, so you'll definitely want to stick around for that. It can't be trivia anymore. Although I didn't ask a trivia question, so That's maybe true. I'll do that later. Yeah. I feel like the safe one's out of the way now. That's right. But not out of the way. Another game point for Andrew Tsao. One more out of the way, courtesy of Dan Liu, as he fights, and a timeout called on Andrew Tsao's side. Seattle Spinners looking to step ahead on the scoreboard. Romania, hello to you, Pavel. Probably the longest rally you've seen in the past 10 minutes. Fair enough. 10 minutes, not too high of a standard, but yeah, I think that's it. I like that you're no, you don't speak in hyperbole. Some people might have said, that's the longest rally I've seen in my life. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> ever in the history of the sport. So good for you. Appreciate your honesty and accuracy, Neijin. Thank you, Hannes, for uh, encouraging everybody to like this video and share. We've got just over 400 people watching live right now. On day one, we had over 800. With the wheel behind us, with Matt Hetherington sitting next to me in the excitement of the last day, I think we should be able to get back up over 800. But it's going to take some sharing and caring. Let your friends know that they need to be watching the first ever professional American League for table tennis, Major League Table Tennis, MLTT. Don't forget, subscribe to Major League Table Tennis on YouTube and follow them on all their social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. Did I say TikTok? TikTok. All right, now you've got them all. I follow on all of them. And you can catch everything you need on MLTT.com where you can get your tickets if we're within driving or flying distance. I highly recommend you make it out to see it live. You'll have a chance to meet me most likely and uh, Maybe some of the star commentators here and the players themselves. And I'll help you with the scoreboard layout. I think it's actually less confusing now than it was on day one, so things are looking good. And Andrew Tsao makes the timeout count. He cashes it in, 11 to nine. A two to zero lead for Andrew Tsao. And they will play the third game as they always do. All games are played as it's round robin format. So, I see the comments. Wow, I'll tell you more about that, but I think it's wheel time. Matt, would you do the honors? You want me to do it again? I'm down with that. Here we go. Suspense, suspense, suspense. What's it gonna be? Pop culture references only for a game. <laughs> this is gonna be tough. I feel Just like do I, it. I know I love. <laughs> I feel like we're going to get a lot of uh, movie quotes and Star Wars things. Are we going to wait until the game starts, or are we? Well, just I guess that's what you that? guys started, but I'll wait till the game starts to, to make it fair and square. <laughs> I got my just do it out of the way, though. 
So once the game starts, we'll do it in the meantime. We're gonna do the best part we can. The chat will be up because we wanna make sure we encourage people to bring their comments in. We hope you enjoy the match. Hello to you in Puerto Rico. Get ready for a lot of pop culture references and sweating in the commentary booth. Wow, yeah, it is gonna be tough. So we'll do our best. Oh wow, okay. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. MLTT stands for Major League Table Tennis. We've got three choppers, Angela Guan, Matthew DeSantelon, and Tyrese Knight. All right, now I feel like I'm in the pressure seat. Game's about to start. Pop culture references. Let the games begin. I feel like now you're waiting for me to say something. <laughs> that was smooth like butter. <sighs> That's a good one. Oh, he got served and followed up. Look at that flick of the wrist. As Wayne once said, get the net. Which Wayne? <laughs> Wayne and Garth Wayne? I don't know who that is. Maybe. Wayne's World. Stacy. Oh, internet culture We're and over. celebrities. Get the net. You spin me right round, baby, right round. So much spin on that forehand. We should have a hit counter right now. You would just be scoring all the points right now. I think I'm still on zero. <clears throat> You're the best around. <laughs> he found defense in a hopeless place. Andrew Tao, anteing up, MOP style. Shot to the heart, and you're to blame. Andrew Tao gave Dan Leo a bad name. Uh. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a spectator, spectator to the pop culture reference show. I'm just a girl. Just, well, I'm drawing blank, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Take a good look at me, just trying to remember the lyrics. We can erase the only from this task completely. <laughs> good times. <laughs> Ooh la la. We just had this conversation before we started the stream about how your brain just blanks. Well, not yours, clearly, but mine. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> In 
in my head. <laughs> Jason Derulo, <laughs> that's he was pointing to his head. Jason Derulo in itself is a pop culture reference because he sings it at the start of every song. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Derulo, J A R. Beluga Heights. <laughs> I have to hit my Adam's apple. Big target. Which is literally Adam's <laughs> Adam's apple. <laughs> Thank you for not unsubscribing. <laughs> uh, scoreboard here listening to the winds of change. Of all the song names that I would know, <laughs> just nothing. <laughs> uh, somebody suggested the Spinneroonie from Booker T. If somebody does a 360 forehand, that would work. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. But it's okay to keep your clothes yeah, on. <laughs> keep them on. Up to you. Do what you want. Cause no harm. Do what you want. What's do happening? all you can. Break all the in rules and go to <laughs> with Superman and die like a champion. Yahey! Game point. Oh, now I can say that Andrew Song's living on a prayer. He's down 10-6. Ah. Also, finally I got one in. Also living on the edge. Yow. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. He's all alone. In a time of need. He's racing and chasing. And right, going the course. A towel break on his lonely horse. <laughs> His hands are small, I know. They are not yours, <laughs> there's his. There's his, what? <laughs> <laughs> I lost the, I never had the ability to speak English. <laughs> we are free. <laughs> I don't know if that's a pop culture reference. History reference, potentially. But game over. There it is, we survived. I, I didn't survive, you, you <laughs> crushed that, I was. Wow, that was for those of you that tuned in late. I would just like to quickly clarify. First of all, congratulations to Dan Leo on sacking that last game. Andrew Tao taking the first two. Coming up next, we've got the doubles with Damian Provost and Emily Tan versus Johan Hogberg and Yasi Ortiz, who's from the Dominican Republic. Caribbean queen, I call her. You might recognize her from this YouTube channel. So if you tuned in late, here's what was happening. This wheel behind us has, it's the wheel of fun. And we've got some challenges. So we had to commentate in pop references only. We took out the only part and did mostly where we could. We tried. It was challenging. Yeah, in real time, it's like you're being pulled both ways because you want to offer some insight to what's happening. But at the same time, you want to play by the rules, you know? Right. I ended up in the middle ground. I just froze like a deer <laughs> in headlights. I probably could have used that one at some point. Hey, know, the cold never bothered you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you just end up with like a bunch of them in your head, and then you there's just the time to use them never comes up. Yeah. Man, now I have tons of frozen You references. freestyled that. You just killed it. Hey, I have a funny story about a freestyle competition in college, actually. It's a short story. 
it was I, I think it was just because a bunch of friends showed up, but there were 14 MCs in a freestyle competition. I stood out by the way I was dressed and uh, my ethnicity. But I made it to the final three, and in the final three, they had a wheel of fun type of situation no where they said, you have to include these three words in your freestyle. You have one minute. Here we go. And uh, I used all three words in the first line of my freestyle. <laughs> Can <laughs> you remember clear, what they were? Um, I think it was Coca-Cola. Uh... Australia in the Bible. <laughs> it was a religious uh, freestyle competition sponsored by Coca-Cola. In Australia. No, that was <laughs> random. <laughs> Should have been, though. I don't know why Australia wasn't in on that. Australia hit us up. All right, doubles. Scoreline right now tied up at three games apiece. Nice placement here by Damian Provost. It almost feels boring and easy now to commentate without these challenges of pop culture references. We'll have a wheel spin after the second game or whenever our director tells us. A little bit about the players. Emily Tan, one of two Tan sisters here. The older sister, Angie Tan, the younger. Emily, a senior in high school. She's got other high school students saying, what's it like to be a pro athlete? I saw you live streaming. She fights so hard. You talked oh, yeah. about it. Yeah. And actually, her, I feel like her and Damien complement each other so well because he's so cool and calm, and she's so fiery. And then he's steady, she's aggressive. I mean, they've played some great doubles together. Punishing that serve. That serve gave Lily Jong a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. As it should. It's incredibly heavy spin, but Johan right there, Jay Hogberg with the blonde on top, said, my bad, that was a little bit high. While I was drinking some water, Yasi Ortiz had a crazy flat hit. Signaling right there under the table, Yasi Ortiz, how she's planning to receive. Good opening attack there from Damian Provost. In case you're newer to the sport, players you will see signaling to each other what they plan to serve. Emily Tan giving her signal. Sometimes the third ball attacker, the teammate, will call what they want on the serve. And even on the receiving side, <laughs> we did a little rock and paper there. Fist bump to an open palm. See if it's still there in the replay. Ready? <laughs> Yasi goes paper. Jay goes rock. I remember quite a long time ago, I think it was the World Team Cup, and it was Adar Al Getty and Fong Yi Jun. Tom Feng played doubles together, and in the end, they went for the handshake and just mismatched like three or four times on the ITTF live stream. It's so good. It's the best. I love those. All right, keep the comments coming. We'll check back in. Now that we're back in normal commentary mode temporarily. All right, Brazil is high on my list. By the way, in case you're curious why the officials are standing right now, in doubles, not only do the players have to alternate every shot, but they must serve from the right side of the table on the diagonal. It's the only time in table tennis where you have to serve to a certain part of the table. You must serve from behind the line always. I guess unless you're playing a player who's seated, who's in a wheelchair, there are a few other rules that come up. Oh, down to the ground. Not afraid to spill out Jay Hogberg. <laughs> Look at this, goes low, wow. Saves his right knee in the process. That no. was a crazy spill. He said to us, after he had his leg injury in the West Division, he said he'd never been injured before in his table tennis career. And it shocked me so much. Because that guy throws his body on the line all the time. To be young, what a gift. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Oh, that smack, Yasi Ortiz. It makes me feel good, because I think people on my channel, have, if you haven't seen it, check out Adam versus Yasi, but you can see me uh, playing one of many pros. There are a lot of pros out there that can really just make it clear the difference in our level. But Yasi out here against other pros with shots like that, it's just wonderful to see. I think this is the first time that Johan and Yasi have played together. We saw Nikhil play with Yasi, and then... This weekend, I've seen him at least once. Oh, he may be on this table, yeah. On this table, yeah. Maybe it was just yesterday for me. 
But for you, yeah, this is cool. It's interesting to see. How does it compare for you so far to Nikhil and Yasi playing? I think the tough thing, the, the real pressure of being a free agent and coming into it is that there are so many doubles pairs that have chemistry built up already, and it's so important for doubles. And I think Emily Tan and Damien is one of those pairs that is kind of, it's become like the trustworthy, reliable pairing for uh, the Chicago Wind. So it's a challenge. I mean, Yassi does a great job of rising to the challenge, that's for sure. Nice strawberry here from Jay Hogberg. And just to touch on the point that you made, in doubles, chemistry and how you work together is such an important part of this whole factor. That's the win there for Jay Hogberg and Yassi Ortiz. Very strong. But the free agent factor, a lot of people don't realize what a free agent is because this is sort of, this is a new thing. It's the first time we've ever had professional table tennis in the U.S. So over 180 athletes from 40 countries around the world came to the United States or expressed an interest to try out for the league. And only 64 were drafted. After that, there were several players who were considered free agents, essentially runners up who would be on call if a team didn't, let's say a woman couldn't make it or they couldn't field a team of enough players. For any given weekend of competition, six players have to be there. And five, only five, can play in one given team match. So today you'll see 5v5. And at the end, those five players will come back and play the golden game, which is the most exciting part of the whole show. All right, so a free agent, Yasi Ortiz, was not drafted, and she came in and does quite well here so yeah. far. Yeah. I mean, she's holding her own, and Sonora Silva is the best story right. because he was a free agent, played so well, he won his singles match as a free agent, then came back to perform well in the golden game and was drafted by the team. They right. lost a player due to visa issues, and he became a team member for the Bay Area Blasters and then became top 10 in the league. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine not being one of the top 64, at least by the coach's imagination or preference, and then becoming top 10 in the league? Sonora Silva making family in Sri Lanka proud. Good side spin there on this defensive shot from Damien. Tomahawk chop at the baseline too, not an easy ball. I think we might have a wheel spin after this game, so I'm gonna <laughs> plug it quickly. Don't forget, if you want some free MLTT swag, follow MLTT, that's Major League Table Tennis on Instagram. So at Major League Table Tennis on Instagram and direct message Major League Table Tennis with hashtag AdamCast. And you've got a chance to win some free MLT t-shirts, which are very cool. Unusual shot. We don't see Damien playing quite such defensive shots. Blocking occasionally, quite often actually, but from closer to the table. In doubles, yeah. it's not so common unless you're a chopper to see someone get behind the table and play defensively. Good spin. So strong on the forehand. Gets such good rotation on the first ball and usually his follow-ups are pretty explosive. Yeah, he's very fast. I love it. Anywhere on the court, he'll take his chances. Now, I can't read all languages, but I did see the question, who's your favorite table tennis player, pro and why? So at this towel break, I think it's a good time. For me, Jan Ove Waldner. The Mozart of table tennis. Uh, he was the most creative player I've ever seen. His lifespan, his career. I don't know. He, he's just the most creative player I've ever seen. And as you might guess, I really value creativity. Shushin, Kokiniwa, Adriana Diaz, hmm. Mima Ito. Yeah, Waldner, for me, is my favorite of all time. It's funny. After being alive for some time and continuing to be alive, I know that more and more people are new to the sport yeah. and didn't live to see Waldner compete. Type him in on YouTube, check him out. He's just incredible. Okay, one point in front here. Hogberg and Ortiz, that's Jay and Yassi on the right side of the screen. Seattle Spinners looking to go ahead even more. 
Emily Tan delivering after that aggressive shot by Yossi, taking advantage of the strawberry setup, Yossi, with a nice passive ball from Damien. But Emily really digging her team out of a hole in that point. Yeah, it's been really great to see her kind of evolution as a member of the team. She, I mean, even yesterday when she was playing doubles, they go back to the bench and she's just directing like an orchestra conductor. Simon had a fun question. Do twins have advantage in doubles because of their mind connection when they play? <laughs> I thought you were going to say if they're identical twins, maybe the umpire wouldn't notice if someone hit the ball twice in a row. But well, uh, Maybe they'd get the playing order wrong all the time. Yeah. They wore the same shirts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would guess twins do have an advantage, even just siblings for that matter, but anyone you know well. Right in a team sport, you can you're setting up your teammates. So yeah, I would say twins have a major advantage in doubles and table tennis. I think the LeBron brothers, while they're not twins, yeah. three years between them have a big advantage. Hey, the Yoshimura brothers. Yeah, I mean it depends a lot on. So okay, so I'm just gonna get straight to the point. I used to play with my sister, and we had to stop because <laughs> it did not work at all. <laughs> so it depends on, <laughs> you know. Uh, a lot of factors, I guess. Rachel and Joanna, two sisters that creamed me in doubles. You can watch that on my YouTube channel if you haven't seen it already. Biggest plot twist ever because uh, they're both individually way better players than me. And we played singles and we played doubles. And there was a lot of plot twist going on between those two different events that we played. Good rally here, Emily Tan staying close to the table and that team spirit coming out. Chicago wind now with three game points. They've done such a good job of keeping Hagberger off balance. Really seen him out of position trying to play forehands a lot. Perfect placement here, Yasi Ortiz painting the line. Nice parallel, these strawberries coming out. Anders Lind was in the chat yesterday and uh, if he is right now, he might feel a little bit trespassed. <laughs> he might ask for royalties. <laughs> Trademark it quickly. Another game point saved. In all fairness, though, much like the snake existed long before me, uh, the strawberry's been around for a while. Just Anders Lind is definitely drawn a lot of positive attention to that shot as he's wonderful at it. And as the timeout is called, Chicago Wind looking to capture this game in a much needed situation here. I actually remember quite a few years ago now, I think when Gauzy started doing that shot, he, for a little while, they called it the violin because it was like this kind of... Yeah. <laughs> it was very, like it. very short-lived. It's like, oh yeah, it's a backhand violin. <laughs> It is funny how certain nicknames stick around and certain don't. Mm. Um, I've tried that as well, you know, coming up with different nicknames for players. There are some that really stick and some that, eh, I'm just hoping the claw. I think she's going to make it to the top top 30 in the world. I think we're going to see her in televised matches around the world soon good. enough. And the claw for me is one of my favorite nicknames given to someone when she was 11 years old. As soon as you say the claw in my head, all I can think about is Toy Story. Oh, I you thought know, you were going to go Liar Liar. No, you know the... The claw. Yeah, sure. this one. The claw <laughs> chooses. Right. The claw. <laughs> that might be on the wheel here. I should save these voices for later just in case. Nine serving ten. Yasi with the follow-up attack. You know what it is. Say it with me. Golden, Golden point. point. One point to determine the winner here in game number two. Seattle spinners on the receive. Chicago wind. Damian Provost with the serve. Yossi Ortiz, the free agent, is making a strong case for being drafted as soon as possible. On the move, the wide forehand attack from two steps behind. What a comeback. 7-10 down, four in a row. That's huge. Amazing turn there. Yasi making all of the Caribbean proud. I can tell you a lot. We've got the wheel coming up, but I want to say quickly, by the way, Ahika and Sutirta 
are not sisters. That is correct. Mukherjee, a very common last name in India, much like Agarwal and many other last names. Shah, depending on which region of the country you're from. Although Vietnam, I think, with the win situation has got a, a pretty yeah. dominant last name situation. Although, anyway, we'll get to that yeah. later. Okay, on deck, Tim Wong, three-time U.S. national champion. My first time commentating him in MLTT will come up next. He'll be playing Andre Lopchik from Czech Republic for Seattle Spinners. But now, Matt, the wheel of fun. Here it is. All right. No the repeats. Good, the good, yeah, the good thing about this is there's no repeats, so I don't have to panic about pop culture references again. Oh, uh... Audience chooses punishment. We're keeping our eyes on this comment section. You guys get to choose. What should we add? How can <laughs> we make this a more fun, flavorful game? Anything you want that's not on the wheel. Okay, let us know, comment section. Come up with something fun. <laughs> First thing, ooh. First thing, ooh, okay, I like it. Noxy shorts, let's see. Do you think Ma Long will play the Paris Olympics? Yes, in singles, I don't know. A oh, ripping shot down the forehand. Give us something quick. We've got to do it for a game. Opening topspin right into that elbow. We're looking. Haven't, I haven't been invited to many WTT events. There haven't been a lot of big ones until Frankfurt recently, and I was already committed here, so that's why. I'm, I'm, yeah, first time I haven't been available for one in about 10 years. I'm ready. I'll be there when they invite me. Cooking All right. references. Cooking references. Very fun. Done. We'll see what we can boil up here in the commentary booth. Yeah. Damien Provost is going to be stirring up a storm. Oh! Oh, that's bad service. No tips for him. Indeed. <laughs> Two <laughs> tablespoons of bad luck on that serve. Ah, okay, letting it simmer, just bringing the heat to a very low flame there as he sits down on the ground. They will switch sides as one pair has reached five points, holding the other to a bagel. Yeah, it is still a bagel, or a donut. Both true, both delicious. Ah, stirring up the scoreboard a bit here, just mixing up the pot of points. Whipped that backhand like cream. This is giving a nice texture to the game right now. I feel like it's just got that sort of creamy vibe that <laughs> everyone can enjoy, you know, for the whole table. Trying to strain that one through the net, but yeah, everything held up, caught in the colander at the middle of the table. Wow, a delicious shot from way back under the table. A whole bunch of side spin them in on that. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some really weird reason, I just have cauliflower stuck in my head right now. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to be able to use it, not physically. Well, we'll see salt about that in a bit. Heavy dose of underspin there. Just sprinkled in by Jay Hogberg. Oh, my I goodness. Up. Wow. Not enough spice. You could say, very generous portion from the Seattle spinners serving it up here. Free sides for all. Just a sampling of what can be done. Emily Tan once again shaking the pan. No! Oh, that's a huge point. Shaken, not stirred. Walking the walk right now. Yasi Ortiz. It is just burning the opponents right now. But I think her taste buds can handle. My question is, will the Chicago win come back for seconds? So far, so good. All you can eat style right now. The buffet has not been closed, not yet. Oh, that forehand from Hagberg was slightly overcooked, I think. 
But a dispatchula there from the uh, Seattle Spinners <laughs> with Yasi Ortiz countering from a step behind the table. Side Spinneman, by the way. Side Spinneman. Not to be confused with Cinnamon. No relation. Say not enough spinach to get that ball to come back down. Top spinach. Mmm. Oh, baking up some topspin on that one. Wow. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> that was a pop culture reference as well. There you go. <laughs> Doubling down. Wow, well the ratio right now, the balance of say, how much Seattle spinner you wanna add to the mix for the proper taste, that whole six to seven ratio is gonna make this a very nice sort of feel for the meal. Oh, that's toast. Wow. <laughs> Just to toasted down the line. Just melting the butter completely. That parallel shot, oh. I guess we were referencing the wrong scoreboard. So, 11 to seven, <laughs> and ding, the dish has been cooked. A delightful meal courtesy of Yossi Ortiz and Johan Hogberg over Chicago wins Damian Provost and Emily Tan. Three to zero, a clean sweep. Yeah. They really cleaned their plate. They did, down to the last breadcrumb. <laughs> Man, this was way different than the pop culture references. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These cooking references. What is it about? I guess, you know, we're having meals at least once a day. Good suggestion. Thanks to you guys in the great. chat pit. Wonderful. What a great community. I feel like we can have a repeat of purple, I think, if it comes up, just because they'll be different every time. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, after that, that's a great call. Yeah. For those of you who tuned in late, just for reference, this wheel behind us, we have to commentate one game in a certain style, um, which could get really <laughs> tricky if one comes up. I think we all know which one that is. But um, thank you for referencing that. I think Matt killed it on that one, was really solid, delivering big time. But yeah, in that last game, we took the crowd suggestion from the subscribers in the chat, and cooking references was the theme for the last game. So I'm gonna actually sip a little bit of water can you tell us a little bit about these two stars right here? Yeah. So, I mean, I know Tim really well um, because we lived together. Um, when I lived in Denver and Colorado, he's two-time Olympian, played in London and Rio. Um, currently works full-time for Deloitte, but has basically converted his entire basement into a mini table tennis club. So I think he has four tables down there, and then he has PK friends in there coaching as well. Um, he's just passionate about staying in table tennis and he's always wanted to find a way to be a part of the sport and right now with MLTT it's it's a big opportunity for him to focus a bit more on playing um, so he's you know he's trying to get back into playing trying to get back into shape and um, this is his first opportunity to play for the Chicago win so I know he's trying to make a big impression I saw him in doubles yesterday or the golden game I saw him in and I was really impressed he's actually to my understanding, quit drinking, uh, which makes it sound just a social drinker before, uh, not an alcoholic, but I'm very proud of him, and I think he's trying to get back in shape. He said, you know what, he wants to do well for Chicago Wind. He figures if he's going to be playing table tennis, he's right. going to be in the best shape he possibly can be, and I'm really impressed. We're talking about, as you mentioned, a two-time Olympian, a three-time national champion. I remember when he was 15 years old and he had this tournament that brought him up like 300 points or so in USATT ratings. And then it wasn't too long before he became the national champion. Yeah. He was the reason that Kunik Jaw wasn't the national champion, in my opinion, at 13 years old. Semi-final yeah, match. 2013, I remember that, yeah. Incredible. He was like 5'2 at the time, Kunik Jaw. So... Lapchik is from the Czech Republic and yesterday on this table he lost the first game against Bastion Dupont 11-0 and then won the next two games which in my mind was just outstanding I mean the mental fortitude you need to bounce back 
from 11-0 and then especially in the short three game format to take the next two games is really impressive yeah that is quite a statement to the fighter and how mental the sport can be mm. how it is really a factor of figuring out sometimes not giving up and saying what causes my opponent trouble service game for Lopchik is also very strong he goes pendulum here but heavy spin yeah and it's deceptive he doesn't follow through it was tough to tell what was on it with the side spin get ready I think a lot of people struggle with his pace as well. I mean, even when he was playing Koyo Kanemitsu yesterday, um, he has a slightly slower pace, especially on the backhand when he opens. It's kind of a draw, more drawn out opening, but then he punt mixes and punches as well. Right. It's funny, when I think of Tim's game, it's weird to say, I remember him being an outstanding player I've had the chance to commentate with him, but I haven't commentated his match in so long. When I think about his game, I just think of it as very steady. Like uh -huh. he's a fighter, he's a counter looper, yeah. but nothing too stand out or unusual about his game. Yeah. He is actually using like a, a harder tackier rubber on both sides. Ah, going Chinese style. Yeah, so he, he, he's kind of expressed he's not entirely sure whether that's the way he wants to go but his backhand has been getting a lot more spin. It is interesting. I know Ma Long uses Chinese rubber on both sides, but not all members of the Chinese national team do. For a while, you would use a Chinese tacky rubber on the forehand and a soft, springy, spongier rubber on the backhand. Yeah. That's why you'll see Chinese players twiddle the racket when someone starts lobbing. They don't need as much spin. They need more speed on the ball. But speaking of spin and speed, we've got the speed and the footwork of Andre Lopchik as he steps around this backhand, but puts enough spin on it to cause some trouble. Oh, I tried. <laughs> I realized you were on screen. I'm like, oh, no. I want to share with the Snapped. world. Nice. Chicago wind with Timothy Wong in action for his first weekend. He was on the bench one time. They allowed seven there. I remember seeing that. What's on your mind? What are you thinking? Um, I think Lapchik's off to a pretty good start. I mean, again, like the rhythm disruptions are really big for him. And actually, he has played some outstanding rallies when he's backed off the table. It was actually uh, my favorite point from the last West Division was him against Sonora, and he was lobbing from all the way across his backhand corner, all the way back out to the forehand, and then just somehow found a way to counter loop. As international, I was going to say as an international player, someone who's represented New Zealand at the World Championships, you've also been around the world. You, you gave this credit to Tim, and I want to give it to you as well. I know you're not one for taking jobs outside of table tennis. You're pretty hell-bent on uh, sticking with the sport, so yeah. I greatly appreciate that. And uh, we noticed that in Europe we see a lot more sort of comfort in the lobbing game, hmm. a little bit more willing to back off and play the ball high with topspin. I have my thoughts. I'm curious, why do you think that is? I think a lot of it comes from being more flexible to creativity when they're backed off the table. I mean, some of them kind of mix in chops. I mean, we've seen Mark Duran just Pandora's box out there when he's backed off the table. And I think it's just the frequency of matches they play. I mean, in, in Asia, like especially Japan, Korea, China, very technically focused lots of drills lots of multi-ball in Europe there's a little bit more creative freedom in their training schedules and I think that just leads to sometimes more lobbying or kind of quick problem solving and you see a lot more inside out shots or side spin. you know side spin chops and stuff like that yeah no I think that's a I feel you I think that's the key reason for me, too, the encouragement of creativity. Hmm. Interesting question here. Mike Trackstar says, Adam, what is your favorite camera angle to watch TT? And this is going to, I love addressing this. I love questions that are potentially controversial or where people too, have strong opinions because it might surprise you. Good defense behind the table, keeping the top spin on, keeping it baseline here. Wow, these balls are not easy to play, really just jumping out. The answer to the question for me is maybe very safe. 
It's simply, it depends on the style of play and what shots are being played. I think different camera angles reveal different things. Sometimes it's the side camera angle that WTT uses or that we use here for replays. Oh, the tug of war, Tim Wong with a big counter backhand at the start of this replay, yes. moves right back into the table, capturing that valuable real estate and becoming the attacker, defense becoming attack. They've switched roles to the camera question. I think there was a YouTube channel, there still is, TT Countenance. Oh yeah. This camera angle yeah, yeah. for me was the best I've ever seen. It's, I actually requested this camera angle more or less, but slightly lower, basically right. from just the right side of the bench, a little bit above the head of the bench. It's sort of on my YouTube channel where I try to take video from. I feel like that is the best of all. It's the best you can do in one single shot. You can never have the best angle for every shot. You just can't. Yeah. But for me, that's the best bet to play it safe with one camera. I think that angle captures the pace well. Table tennis being like down on that level. Good touch from Tim Wong, but in the end, it's Lopchik who finds the opportunity with a little bit of side spin in that longer push. Nice use of side spin, sets him up with a one point lead. Lopchik, 9 8 up. Seattle spinners, the West has not been the stronger half this weekend. Remember, it's East meets West, so East will only play West and vice versa. Normally, if you're just joining us, the way the season works, as it's 9-9 at the third towel break, East Division plays in the East, West Division plays in the West, and it's round robin. All the teams play each other at every meet they have. This is week number seven. We've had six weeks of competition so far, or weekends, you could say, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You should be following MLTT on all their social media. Subscribe to them right now on YouTube if you can. Open up another tab so that you don't miss any of this. But subscribe and follow the entire season. 14 weeks of action. Will Cobra Kai play today? Great question. I hope so. Carolina Gold Rush is strong, and Cobra Kai is always a thrill to watch. One of the coolest guys I know. Good read from Tim on the receive, but the follow-up third ball attack... Not much to be done here. Andre Lopchik right into the middle on the step around forehand. Jyoti, I'm doing wonderfully, thanks. By comparison, the last two days for me, I did my best to put on a happy face and come out here and commentate. I was thrilled to watch. Today, I'm feeling wonderfully better. Oh, Lapchik steps around. He gave up so much of the table to finish that off. And it's paid off two points in a row, but this is out of this world. He's completely standing on the backhand side of the table to play a forehand, and it takes the game 11-9, to nine, a game of risk assessment. I love seeing the basketball players coming in to watch the table tennis right now. I hope more do. It's exciting. Man, so Seattle spinners 7-3 to three up. Is table tennis more popular in San Francisco and Bay Area than most cities because of the large Chinese population? I think that's a big factor. Yeah. I mean, San Francisco, the United States, despite at times not coming off that way, is definitely a melting pot. I think in major cities in the United States, if you don't know some Spanish, if you don't know a handful of other languages, you're probably not living in the heart of the city. If you don't know the popular dishes from different cultures, this is one of the most amazing things about the United States is that you really get a taste of cultures. Yeah. You go to school, you, you meet people whose parents come from different parts of the world. My dad was born in Italy. I, I mean, didn't even know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't. Uh, it was during the war. My grandparents come from Belarus. I've got Polish, Russian, German. I've got all sorts of mix, and, and most of us do. Mm. You know, the natives... Uh, most of the United States are immigrants. This is just the way it is. <laughs> First generation. Yeah. All right. So in terms of the Bay Area, I do think that the Bay Area is a giant melting pot that has a wonderful mix of cultures and people from all around the world. And with the strong Asian representation from South Asian, like India, for example, yeah. and East Asian, like Chinese, there is a lot of table tennis love in the Bay Area, and it is the mecca of table tennis. I mean, Tim was training at I ICC when he was yeah, exactly. national champion. Lily Jong, 
who now represents Table Tennis America. I mean, yeah. outside of Amy Wong and Lily of Table Tennis, I feel like national champions are notoriously from the Bay Area in the yeah. United States. Yeah, and I think practice partners and coaches that come from uh, China or parts of Asia, they feel more comfortable moving to places where those communities are already established. Right. They set up clubs, they start coaching young kids, building up talents, so that definitely plays a role as well. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. There are some players that come from China to certain parts of Southern or Northern California and really don't need to learn English if they don't want to. Yeah. Although I will say I'm quite impressed with Jean Bauma. Yeah. He's really, really focused. I mean, his English is quite good, and he's one of the newest players from China to be in the United States. I think only three years and is already the top world-ranked player in the absence of Kanak Ja. Thank you, Felipe. Good to have you following from Spain. Good points here. Tim Wong for Chicago Wind on the serve. After a very close, narrowly fought game number one, losing 11-9, or 9-11 you could say, Tim Wong looking to capitalize here in game two, takes a 2-1 to one lead. For those of you just joining, New Zealand's own and U.S.'s own now, Matt Hetherington sitting next to me, three-time world championships battler representing New Zealand. Also my doubles partner from the 2013 Auckland Open. Yeah, and we did... We did too, right? I think it was South Island Championships first. Oh, Christchurch. Oh, in Christchurch. Wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah we did too. That was our warm-up. We nearly knocked out the top seeds in our event. Was that Jonathan? Well, who were the... I think it was Stuart Armstrong, and I can't remember who he was playing with. That was down in Christchurch. What was Sarah's ex-boyfriend's name? John Cordieu. John. Okay, I remember I had a crazy Shushin style chop that was like around the net hooking ridiculous and it went on the table and I wished I was recording that. Yeah. But uh, fortunately there's been enough footage to, to pull together some highlights since. <laughs> All right, back to the match at hand. Three points apiece at the first towel break. Towels allowed every six points unless you ask permission to clean the table. That's why you'll see players wiping their hands on the table just to dry their hand. Usually they'll wipe their hand in a place where the ball's unlikely to bounce. Some people ask, why don't they just use their clothing? They will, but sometimes their clothing also quite sweaty. Yeah, lap check is pretty physically intense out there, so I think if he wiped his hands on his clothing, it would probably do more harm than help. Right. Interesting question from the chat. Adam, how long have you been commentating? It's funny, a lot of people don't realize this because it's usually not on camera, but some time now, I guess I won the Voice of Table Tennis competition to become the Voice of Table Tennis in 2014. And ever since, it's been mostly a full-time job. Once the pandemic came around, there were less opportunities. But yeah, for me, this is riding a bike back in a comfort zone. I love it. I'm happy to be here with, uh, with my subscribers and other new viewers and good friends sitting next to me so thank you all for tuning in and with major league table tennis it's been a ton of fun i'm emceeing this season but hopefully there will be more op opportunities to commentate as well thanks for sending in your comments don't forget to ask any questions you want fun facts whatever it may be we'll have a wheel spin i think after this game for you the fight of Lopchik. I haven't heard him so much. I think right now he's quite pumped and determined. After all, Seattle spinners representing the West Coast know they need some points right now. Yeah. Number two looking to get into that number one spot. A lot of points up for grabs this weekend with more matches than usual. Good serve here, Tim Wong. Side top spin on the reverse pendulum serve. It's really cool to me to see Tim Wong back in action because after so long it just feels like some of the youngsters might not really appreciate and know some of the legends yeah. in USA table tennis. I mean that tends to happen I feel like even at the ITTF level as well like globally especially you know when we asked about Grand Slam champions the majority of people are gonna be like Ma Long Ding Ning and I remember during the pandemic I was doing uh, kind of like just fun brackets where I would be like, okay, who's the greatest, who's your favorite female table tennis player ever? And I'd have these brackets with all these different players and 
you know, a ton of people would outvote, you know, if you put like Wang Nan in there against like Chen Meng, like everyone's voting for Chen Meng. I'm like, come on, like Wang Nan was amazing. But right. most people just, they, they don't know. The younger generations don't know anymore. It's tricky. I think we all grow appreciation for our parents when we start to become them. The older we get, we realize, oh wow, they were once our age too. It happens with our music tastes, food tastes. I just started liking pickles and olives. I was like, I never in my life, I thought, <laughs> what? How can you do that? Was it a let service? Was, was that what was called? Okay. Tim Wong with a very sort of nonchalant slap back. That's sometimes when a player didn't see a let, but here's a call. Says, okay. Tim Wong has had a wonderful read on that serve. I mean, as a commentator, I've definitely gotten it wrong before. As a pro or two has mentioned to me, they're like, you know that player never serves underspin? I'm like, I didn't realize that. Please let me know before a match because it looked like underspin to me. But that serve is so tough to read. Andre Lopchik barely follows through at all. It's a Craig Bryant-esque serve. <laughs> and Tim Wong still has returned it almost every time quite well. He's got him behind the table where he wants him. A bit of side spin on the inside out forehands. We'll keep him in the backhand corner until he can hit one out of reach. Nice side spin. It's not easy to keep lobbing to these side spin attacks. You can see Lapchik was trying to work his way back in on that last shot. What you said, though, about people being new to the game and favoring their players that they've seen, it's tough. I, I do think that basketball in the United States is a wonderful example of this. Ooh, edge of the table. The reason I bring it up, I think the whole question of greatest of all time, it's got so much to do with feeling. Hmm. It's less to do with stats. It's a very personal, emotional decision for people. Waldner is my favorite player. Yeah. And there are many people who will never let go of Waldner being the greatest the sport has ever seen. I, he is my favorite player. I'm re-emphasizing that. But statistics must mean nothing. Right. It, it's not part of the conversation. Data must not be part of the conversation if anyone but Ma Long is the greatest of all time right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wrote an old article about this on my blog, and then I updated it after Ma Long won a second Olympic Games. But there's just so much back and forth between people coming in. They're like, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. So when I did these brackets, I was like, okay, I'm not going to say greatest female table tennis player. I'm going to say who is your favorite Right. Female table tennis player. Right. Because, I mean, this is like this in every sport. There's so much subjectivity. Yes. And you want that. You want people to connect with players and go, well, you know what? You think that's the greatest player? I think this is the greatest player. I like this player. And for any sport to be successful, fans need to connect with players on some kind of level. Right. That said, I, I really do want to throw so much credit Waldner's way because between career span and this is why Michael Jordan is thought of as you just say the Michael Jordan of any sport right. you just think the greatest yeah Michael Jordan was the most influential player the NBA has ever seen Waldner you could say the same for in table tennis I think so yeah He's the most influential player the sport has seen yeah bit of frustration I'm a little surprised we didn't see a yellow card out here but game to Tim Wong 11 to 8 Interesting, we've got some wonderful umpires here. I will say I've been very very impressed with the umpires at MLTT throughout the season. They've been strict and I think that's important. You really yeah. do have to enforce the rules or else why have them? Yeah, and I mean, this is a professional league. You have to have standards, so. Do you see anything weird between us on the screen? Matt? All right, let's see. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Trivia. Stop trivia again. Not a repeat. Run it, run it back. But I'll give you a trivia question later just for fun. I'll throw something in there. Switch oh, personalities no. <laughs> with co-host. All right. So this is for the next game. Okay, for the next game, if, if you're tuning in now, enjoy this. Matt will do his best impression of me. I don't know if we should do accents. You can do accents. I, that's punching up, I think. 
You can try. I, I, I can was, try. It's going to be terrible. I would love to see somebody try. Sure, I'll do my best. And I'll, personality wise, Matt will be me. He'll take the lead. And uh, I will be color commentator Matt Hetherington. I need to. From New Zealand for this next game. Is this yours? <laughs> it's not. It was offered to me when I had the chills the oh, past really? two days. That's colorful, so I might. You can I borrow this if you want. I might just put it on. You know, I gotta add some more color. You look like <laughs> Babushka. <laughs> so do I, I guess. Okay. That blanket smells. Put it back. Yeah, it really, really does. smells. You can use my jacket. It's. Was a, I had no idea. I'm so happy that that was like the fourth layer I was wearing the other day. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's a bad smell. <laughs> Sorry. I feel bad for Luke. I don't know where that came from. That's why he gave it to me. Okay. Right, here we go. There's a lot going on here. Right? No, I've, I've seen you have this set up. I don't know what's in your pocket, so I'm not gonna. Is your wallet in there? Wait. Hold on. Hopefully this doesn't mess with the headset. There we go. I have to come up with a lot of descriptive words. All right, let's get into the match. No, straight in the bottom of the net. <laughs> That's I love it how you're sitting there with just a dead stare on your face, because that's probably what I was doing. Oh, a big rally there from both players. Hooking shots wide. Tim Wong trying to stay on the offensive. He's not able to. Now, I can say that I've uh, <laughs> seen Tim Wong play quite well with the Chinese rubbers on the forehand. He's got a bit more spin. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Lopchik, though. Lopchik's got a spinny game as well. Good behind the table. European creativity. And Tim Wong with a slow but stuttering backhand. Nice and steady across court. I will say, having trained with Tim a bit, that uh, he's very consistent in that spin game. He will play controlled. He's a very wise player. That's why he got hired at Deloitte. And a swing and a miss. He's frustrated. It's a tough break for Lapchik. And both players will take a towel break. Every six points, they're allowed to towel down. Hi, Ali. I'm Adam this game, so. Interesting choice here. Switch for serves. Backhand here with Lapchik. He misses again. Someone said <laughs> Adam often tells small anecdotal stories. All right, I'll try and think of a really good Tim Wong story. I actually remember the first, one of the first times that I came to the US, Tim Wong playing that match against Canuck. I think it was 11-9 in the seventh. He lost to Canuck when Canuck was, oh, he won. Weren't you born in the US? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit confused Just, right like, now. thrown me now. <laughs> Just misses the end of the table. Great half-long reverse serve. Sends the ball long. Tim's been playing some great power table tennis. It's not the first time we've seen players looking down at their rackets out here. 
sometimes. A little bit of humidity, no, it's supposed to be drizzling today. Will cause a little bit of trouble for the traction on the forehand. Either side, really. Sometimes the humidity will make the ball drop off. Oh, wow, the hands on Lapchuk to get that ball back. Curves the ball from wide on his forehand. Tim's got a tough battle here. I think I mean, the short game, the receive, is going to be a big part for him. I have to lose this. I'm starting to heat up too much. Here you go, Adam. Here you go, Matt. Don't know what I'll do with this thing. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with it either. <laughs> Big shot down the line from Lapchik. Is he Matt Hetherington with Adam? Yes, he is. Tim Wong with a short reverse to the forehand, redirects the ball down the line into the open space. Another big forehand from Tim Wong. Having lived with Tim Wong and practiced with him quite a lot over the years, uh, since I came to the US really, at Lily of table tennis and whatnot, I just feel like Tim Wong has really retained his level quite well. Certainly has. I remember Tim Wong when he was 15 years old. Ah, good old fitting. <laughs> fitting. <laughs> Three-time U.S. national champion, twice Olympian, Timothy Wong. Trained on in the Bay Area. He now lives in Colorado. I might not have played in Colorado before. I don't think. <laughs> I have, though. I can tell you a lot about it. The higher altitude makes the ball move a little bit faster, quite a lot faster, actually. It's an amazing thing, really, is it? Players, sometimes, you know, they're traveling around the world. They have to play in different atmospheres, different humidities, but also different altitudes, which affects the speed of the ball quite a lot. Players will show up days before for the national championships in Vegas, just to make sure that they can adjust because the, the long serve will really drift long and the service is so precise, it's important. that They come early to get used to the atmosphere and the altitude. I actually remember Tal Leibovitz, Paralympic gold medalist, used to change his rubber sheets to, I think, 1.9 millimeter sponge when he, whenever he was playing in Las Vegas, just to kind of try and combat that altitude. Wow, I know Tall quite well. I didn't know that. It's fascinating information, Adam. Oh, and a big counter rally. Lapchik steps in at the end to finish the job. Look at that step in. Added so much power there and a big fist pump in the air from... Andre Lapchik. I must say he's done quite a good job of using that spin to move back into the table. It's been impressive, really, taking advantage, trying to get, just keep Tim behind the table, really, and it sets him up with two game points. These game points will decide the winner of this three game showdown. Lapchik missing down the line. Got the setup that he wanted. Just misses the edge of the table. Once again, Adam, as you said earlier, I'm quite impressed also with Tim Wong's receive because that serve is tricky to read. But he still is able to attack it, play it down the line, gets right into the point. Looking good so far in the receive game, Tim.
and Lapchik wins it. An outstanding performance there with the serve. Tim Wong a little bit soft on the receive. Lapchik got him with the punch and then followed up with a blistering forehand. And <laughs> Dude, that was <laughs> well played. <laughs> awesome. For those of you just tuning in. <laughs> so that's why is Adam <laughs> using a British accent right now? I know, I know. It was messy, it was muddled, but uh, Matt was up for the task. He said no problem. So this wheel behind <laughs> us has a bunch of fun things that we have to incorporate in the Adam cast today. The team at MLTT is brilliant, really sharp, and added so much to this broadcast today. Uh, this wheel of fun has all different challenges that we have to incorporate, and the wheel landed on that we had to switch personalities for the last game. So if you tuned in late, uh, Matt played me and I played <laughs> Matt, so I did a terrible version of a Kiwi accent, except for maybe when I hit fitting, you set fitting me up. Fitting was good, yeah, fitting. I like that. <laughs> it's the only word I can say like a true Kiwi, maybe. Um, I nearly sabotaged both of us in the beginning with that. No, I was excited. Colorful rag down there. <laughs> that <laughs> was the worst smell. <laughs> We're gonna get that as far away from us as possible. For a guy who's had a stomach bug for two <laughs> days and had to change underwear one minute before <laughs> broadcast yesterday, I literally left the stadium. The hotel is close enough. Yeah, I'll say it. Oh, no. That was the worst smell I've smelled, <laughs> that blanket. I can't believe it's still here, really. Does anyone have a lighter and some gasoline? <laughs> there's got to there's be better use for this towel than existing in clean air. Anyway, the commentary, <laughs> the challenge was to be each other, so I did my best to let Matt speak about 80% of the time. Uh, I thought you did a wonderful job. Uh, comment section was wonderful. I really liked that people were offering <laughs> character traits about me and just yeah, they were like, "Come on, it more was so anecdotes, charming." Small anecdotal stories. Please. I love it. Thank you for being here to help guide Matt in being more like me. I thought you did a wonderful job. Thanks. It was really fun. Yeah, it was a fun challenge. Once we both got into character and sort of stopped breaking the fourth wall, I thought that was really fun. <laughs> for those of you that didn't know, acting is actually my background, despite my terrible Matt impression. Uh, yeah, so it's sort of fun to improvise and get into the to get into character. Um, I hope we have more challenges like that, and we will have more challenges coming yeah. up. Every game, we'll have a new wheel spin for you, and I think it's also time to share with you that you have a chance to win some giveaways from MLTT. All you have to do is follow at Major League Table Tennis on Instagram and send them a direct message hashtag AdamCast, and you have a chance to win a free MLTT shirt. And I will tell you, that's a big deal because one, they're not cheap. Two, they're reasonably priced. That means they're valuable. So I bought one. I got a discount. They hooked me up with a discount. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and I was still like, oh, wow, these are legit shirts. You can buy the shirts they're playing in, the competition athletic dry fit butterfly shirts, or you can buy their practice shirts, not the one I'm wearing. This is custom made, part of the whole creativity thing that uh, – I try to exercise that freedom when I can. But yeah, it's been really fun. Sorry if we missed your amazing comments. Keep them coming. Thanks for keeping them positive and encouraging. Right now we've got Jay Hogberg to serve to Alex Kazaku of Chicago Wind. This is gonna be a spectacular match. Just to give you a bit more about the players. Johan Hogberg with the blonde hair on the left side of the screen. The lefty has a wonderful serve. Mm. He's all about, I mean, these are two players that are made for highlights. Yeah. We've already seen Alex Kazaku play the ball with a no-look Waldner-style shot where he turns back to the bench for a winner. Oh, my goodness. Just sweeping this one. Closed racket. Oh, man, the inside out down the line forehand. That shot right there should be saved for later. <laughs> There's going to be so much firepower in this match. I mean, these are both players that just take colossal swings into the ball. I think a lot of it for Hagberg hinges on how well or how not well Kazaku handles the serve receive because he sets up for some huge forehand straight off the serve usually. Beautiful angle here. He's got the power and the spin. Now, Kazaku's not the smallest guy, the lightest guy. He's got sort of a hefty presence and strong, big upper body and everything else, but his legs, as legs need to be, are strong and carry him. 
He's able to step around the backhand corner and even from behind the table, lay down some serious threatening power. But here right at the baseline, delivering the goods. It's worth noting right now in the position in this match, because the Seattle Spinners have eight points overall, they're at least gonna get one point. We just got our first around the net shot that was truly lower than the net and around the net. Boom, oh, nice. love it. Completely legal, crushing all myths. Oh, and a step around on the other side, coast to coast, this is east meets west within the table. So fancy. From LA to Tokyo, it's Jay Hogberg. Pop culture still, references still are going. part of it. For me, they are. But under pressure, it's different. When it's only pop culture references, that is tough. Thank you, Ali Kadim. I appreciate that. And TT Life Artem as well. Yeah, so I was saying Seattle Spinners are on eight. So they're guaranteed to lead at the start of the Golden Game right now. So Kazaku's under a lot of pressure because each game in this will end up equaling potentially two points in the Golden Game. If each game that he, if he loses, then they go from one point advantage to then three, and then potentially to five, so. It's funny, I, I wanna keep it fairly about the match, but just cause it's on my channel, I might as well. It was tough for me in the last game to not have a giant facial reaction whenever something happened. <laughs> I was like, Matt wouldn't do, because every time I'm like, but then I'm like, Matt wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's tough. Oh, I thought he had finished the job and it turned back to the bench. Alex Kazaku to the open table. The step around, it's that risk assessment. Is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it anyway. But that is the question, is it worth it when you take a shot? That's why sometimes you'll see players spin the ball softly, play it gently, or simply play for positioning to get the opponent to take the big shot first. As my subscribers would know, I like to share anecdotes, so here's one. Arguably the greatest match in modern history by many people's standards considering all context, the 2017 men's singles final between Ma Long and Fan Zhendong. Statistically, Ma Long went against the odds. We say in table tennis, whoever attacks first outside of defenders, whoever attacks first typically has the advantage in table tennis. But Ma Long put a caveat, a little carrot on that, or an asterisk, I should say. Wide to the back end, keeps him pinned. And that shot coming down close, but just missing. Johan Hogberg holding on to the point. The caveat is, it depends on the quality of the opening attack. Ma Long let Fan Zhendong attack more first and won the match by the narrowest of margins, but statistically was not the more attacking player. I remember that match really well. At the time, I was a huge Ma Long fan, still am. Good. And I wanted him to win it so bad. And so the match kind of started out. I was like, oh man, can he, come, can he still come back from this in the position he's in? So just an incredible match. And little would we know that he would not only win that, retain the title from 2015, but win it in 2017 and again in 2019 after his surgery and absence from the game, and then not show up in 2021. Think about it. When's the last time someone won four world championships in a row? I'm gonna say 1939, Victor Barna had five in a row. That would be the only time, right? He had five in a row, and that was when they were every year. They weren't every yeah. other year. So Victor Barna, people could also argue, greatest of all time, but the amount of nations playing the sport. I'm sorry, it's golden points. It is golden points. Golden points. Tight <laughs> game here. <laughs> and not such a golden way for Kazaku. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, the placement on that serve receive. In the most golden way, he gets it back. Look at that, that flexible wrist. This is a big thing. You can't have locked wrists at this level of table tennis. It's part of the reason I think we talk about different physiques in table tennis. Eugene Wong of Canada yeah. has been the strongest player for Canada since, oh, I don't know, Wilson Jong, maybe 
since Wilson Jong retired, I think it's been Eugene Wong. And his wrists are incredible. But also his legs carry. His legs are, yeah, so strong. He's not the thinnest guy on the block. You might not know he's a professional athlete if you saw him walking down the street. But when you see him play, look at his calves and watch him play. He beat Fong Bo yeah. right after Fong Bo. I think within a year of Fong Bo being the silver medalist at the 2015 World Championships. What was the biggest lead Kazaku had before that golden point? Do you know? Maybe Jackson knows. That's a trivia question. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, I should give a trivia question. But yes or no's aren't super fun. Man. 7-4. How many game But What about at 10 when he had game points? Oh, only 10-9? 10-9. Okay. And, then, and then he, yeah, 10-9. And, and then he unfortunately missed his serve. But he got, right. the game, he got the game anyway. So Yeah. So he's going to be pretty thrilled with that ending. Chicago Wind could use the extra points. Remember, Chicago Wind came in here, for lack of better terms, desperate for points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've had big ups and downs. The second day they were leading, I think, 8-1 in one of the matches after this in the singles and doubles. Um, ended up, I think it was against the Bay Area Blasters. Bay Area closed the gap. They went into the Golden Game. Bay Area won the Golden Game. So statistically they haven't been that great in the golden game so this is a difficult position for them if they go into the golden game too far behind tricky but they've definitely shown some uh some big changes in the team this oh this one's too pretty this is what we've been waiting for he's played some highlight shots to the ground inside out forehand loses the, the knee, knee brace breaks. How could anything possibly hang on to your body? I'm surprised his shirt is still on after that <laughs> shot. Although knowing how sleeves work and whatnot, hey, I guess it makes sense. Spinneroonie, we can use that <laughs> reference that was put in the chat earlier. Yeah. Mega Boy, good question. I think you'd have to make one. They don't sell it. Not the second time. Kazaku Ready does not want that to happen to him once again. Your, honestly, your best chance of getting the table skirt, if they don't reuse them, if they make new ones each time, is to come to an event and wait until the very end. Come to the final. Come to the final weekend. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't save it until the next season. I think they're trying to be resourceful as any good business should in its first season, not just throw money anywhere you can. But, um, yeah, I will say that Flint and the whole gang. Flint, obviously, a successful businessman and a passionate table tennis supporter and player. A decent, I mean, we're quite close and level. And I mean that as a compliment. I don't always, I don't always use myself as a reference for a compliment. But. That's a compliment for him, for sure. I think you're... Thanks, I think, man. I think, I, think, <laughs> I think you have plenty of edge. And that's a compliment for me. All right, Kazaku fighting back, a two-point lead, looking to get ahead. He was up 7-4 in the last game, and it came down to the golden point. For those of you that are newer to MLTT, every single game is not must-win by two. It's simply the first to 11, except the golden game, which is first team to 21 points, where the whole team plays. Took a risk. Johan trying to read the body language here. I like that sort of chop action that he does on his pushes because he comes in with a fast racket. It's tough to tell how much rotation is on it. Nice side spin here. It's a really good decision from Kazuko to try and attack the serve. <laughs> I was trying to incorporate technical insight when I was you. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, Matt does that. He does a good job of adding technical insight as a color commentator should. Aaron Castillo? Mega Boyd, are you coming with Aaron Castillo to MLTT? The chop block, clip in the net, but still low as can be, causing some trouble. Side spin for me. Someone asked in the comments section, 
Top spin, back spin, or side spin, what's your favorite, Adam? And I said, without a doubt, side spin. Creativity, I love it. Oh, second time we've seen it. A reverse pendulum looks up at the light, maybe losing it for a minute. Hmm. Looked at the racket the first, edge. too. Straight into the front edge, right. <laughs> Talking meow. We might. I mean, there's there's one up here that is no English for oh. one game. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> you might need to use some meow. I definitely might have to. How much? Uh, how many other languages do you speak outside of English? Uh, none, professionally. I did a, I did a little German in middle school, which is a long, long time ago now. Okay. Um, unfortunately for me, because of my accent. I never practiced speaking Mandarin, so most of the stuff that I'm studying or practicing is reading and writing and, tr and listening, but speaking-wise, not my forte at all. Good flick here. Hogberg now with two game points. Looking to level the playing field here, make it one game apiece. Just to encourage you, by the way, I think some of the... Uh, some of the best Mandarin speakers from the English-speaking world speak the Queen's English. And Johan Hogberg with that tomahawk serve takes it 11 to 8. I know that's a broad statement. I was going to say, I mean, you know me off the outside of the commentary box, and the Queen's English is definitely not how I'd describe mine. <laughs> yeah, in the U.S., we have limited exposure to Kiwi accents. That's part of the reason mine was so muttered and people. I think <laughs> Phil Emerson that's left great. a comment from... Uh, from England, and I wanted to say, hey, welcome to watching from England. You probably heard me in my muttered Matt accent. Uh, throw in some English accent there. We well, just have limited exposure to distinguish between Australian. I, I, it's really like Australian, Kiwi, New Zealand, mm. South African, mm -hmm. and British. And there's so many varieties, you know, yeah. from Liverpool to just throughout England. Yeah. So well, I'm mine's like bad. The, mine's a little bit of a curveball because if you. If you sit with me and somebody else from New Zealand who was born there and grew up there and lives there now, there's still like quite a big difference. Because um, I was actually born in the UK and I still watch a lot of UK TV shows and talk to a lot of UK friends. So I knew this, studied you, and that's why I threw in the UK yeah. accent. Uh, Booyakasha. Hey. I noticed that uh, that wheel is here. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know what's left now. I oh, do. Oh, 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 actually, I do. Come on, blue, blue, blue. Oh, yes. <laughs> Come on. Matt picks a word Adam cannot use for one game. Does anybody have any ideas about what the best word to be it, it to should ban be Adam from saying during this game? Pick it quickly, because I'm going to start commentating. First point to Kazaku. Um, let's go with shot. Ripping backhand from way behind the table. Alex Kazaku, dangerous, comfortable on both wings, no problems. Every once in a while, you can remind the audience what word I'm not allowed to say while commentating. What, what was it? I don't <laughs> know. <I> try. <laughs> the word was shot. Good pressure here. Jay Hogberg on top of the table, plays the inside out forehand. No stranger to side spin. See, some people in the comments are ahead of the game. They said I should have picked spin. We can do two if you want. Make it more challenging. I'm down. Do you want to do that? Sure. All right. This is, yeah, I, my pick is shot. Well, audience pick is spin. All right, I so love you. Shot and spin. Let's see if he's got a chance right now. Three, one, the lead for Kazaku. So Jay Hogberg. Back on the table, heavy rotation on that ball. Hagberg's just so aggressive. And if he wins this game, the Seattle Spinners start the Golden Game with five points. That's the maximum lead you can start with in the Golden Game. 
Seattle Spinner's really looking for a very big, I think that counts, I think that's fine. <laughs> Heavy rotation again down the middle. A lot of revolutions on that forehand from Alex Kazaku played well into the middle. Nice adjustment. Kazaku reads this ball well after that beautiful receive that Johan Hogberg has done. He just sort of flings the racket. A lot of wrist action there. Imparting that rotation on the ball. So they've switched sides as this is game number three. Hagberg's just plastering forehands everywhere. Down the middle, into the elbow, inside out wide. Placement's good, change of pace as well. Keeping it unpredictable. Punished on the chop block with the side and under. Really a chiseling shot there. And chiseling Alex Kaz I did it! I did it! Oh! It was the two <laughs> words. The two. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. This is a great moment for me. Did I just get Asian glow? I think I do. I have a look. look at us both. I'm blushing. Okay. For the rest of the time, I will do my best. Matt, can you remind them what I'm not allowed to say? Yeah, shot and spin. Can I just remind? <laughs> I'm going to wait for this one first. What a play. Back from the table. To get the ball into the body when you're that far back is... That's incredible. Really impressive play, Alex Kazaku, the Romanian superstar. Did you bait me? Did you say something to ask? No, I did it on my own. I walked no. into it. I was just sitting here waiting. <sighs> that flat hit countered right back. Wonderful ball from Johan Hogberg. Jay tearing it up once again. Neo B, you were right, I already did. I thought I was doing pretty well. I was until that moment. It wasn't that quickly. <laughs> no, you, you held on pretty long. Game already finished. 11 to four. I think two thirds of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta I, I, I just, when you said Seattle Spinners, I didn't even think twice about it. And then you were like, okay, hey, hold on, that doesn't count. This is the thing. This is like table tennis. You have to be so focused at all times in table tennis because if you lose focus for a second, you can step in it and say the word shot or give someone a ball that costs you the golden point, right? Yeah. You push something just a little bit loosely or carelessly, and that can be the difference. Timo said it, but every ball you play should have intention in table tennis. For those of you that don't watch professional table tennis, Timo Bull is one of is arguably the most respected player currently in the game, a legend, an evergreen player, who's currently 42 years old, and had a massive drop in world rankings just due to lack of participation, lack of big events that he could play in the last year. But I will say, honestly, when he came back and played the European Championships this year, he played amazingly, and I've never seen him play so aggressively with his forehand as he was now like every time he comes back you kind of wonder you know it's, it was like with Michael Mays as well you wonder what player is coming back and what kind of shape they'll be in and Timo always comes back and just shocks people all over again yeah so we're about to get into the golden game but before we do you're right I, I the word punishment a forfeit as many say I think you guys should decide what it should be Throw some in the suggestion. I, I feel like I th thought I saw someone say 20 push-ups. How do you feel? Whatever they want. Yeah, I'm okay. It's yeah. tough to do on camera here, though, with the setup. I don't know if we can make that happen. I have bad form in my push-ups. Does that have to happen right now? Should we? I think so. Okay. 
They're picking the golden game. Oh. <laughs> well, while they're setting up, I'll explain the golden game to you. And I haven't done push-ups in a while because I've been very weak the past two days. Okay. Um, when you do it, make sure you don't put the stink rag next to your face. The stink rag is the stinkiest rag in the history of rags or stink rags. So Eric Owens, coach for Chicago Wind. I can hold this. Down. You can hold it? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go get ready for my uh, <laughs> forfeit, my punishment. Go. Can we trash this? <laughs> He's like, I'm not touching it. <laughs> All right, this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're in. Okay, here we go. Count them out. One, two, his form's not too bad. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, he's holding his own. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Bit of a slowdown. 17, he's still going. 18, 19, 20. And 21, he puts in a bonus. I don't know if he was counting. Basketball players in here are loving it. High fives all round. I still win big at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, there's like stuff everywhere here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite happy with that. I genuinely thought when I picked the word shot and you guys were saying spin in the comments that I'd made a mistake with my choice of word, but we'll definitely get some screenshots from the, uh, from the live stream. Well, good job, dude. Your form was fine. Thanks. I think I just felt you, excited to you know, exercise. I think you actually did 21. Yeah, I lost count. I wanted to get those girls in for the high five. <laughs> oh, somebody said I counted too quickly. All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I overheard you, and I was like, I'll do one just in case. The last thing I want to do is under-deliver. That's why I showed up the past two days, right? True. Very true. Golden game. Off to a good start, Seattle Spinners. Um, so all of the orders are the same as the singles. Ah, interesting. We started out with Emily Tan and Yassi in the first, but all of these individual matchups are the same. So we'll see Nikhil and Damian Provost again. I don't want to talk about it for too long, but I felt a little pressure to try and have good form because I knew people were watching. Ooh, chop block. Just missing the contact, edge of the racket there. You could see Nikhil Kumar giving the classic international symbol for what just happened. <laughs> the. There's another classic one, I guess. You should have the what happened meme ready yeah. at all times. <laughs> this is pretty decisive from Provost. Thank you, Nyobi. Appreciate that. Yeah, Provost really bringing the wind right back in here. Six to two at the start of this. That's Whoa, gonna be, a golden sweep. That's going to be disappointing for Nikhil. I mean, he's in a position where he's kind of established, both of these guys have kind of established themselves as their team leaders. And so Nikhil would have definitely wanted to get out there and set the record. This is a tricky situation now, going from 6-1 earlier now to 6-6. Six, six. Chicago wind must be feeling the momentum. The direction of the wind has changed. And continuing on with the flow, the breeze coming back. Tim Wong delivering, taking the first point here. Remember, this golden game will decide the winner of this team matchup. Six points, winner takes all. That's how much the golden game is worth. I don't think I've seen Tim this pumped in a long time on a table tennis table. Maybe he also just did 20 push-ups. Timo does before all his matches. Really? Yeah, he does push-ups. Thanks for that small anecdotal story, Adam. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know the exact number, 
But he says a bit of tension in the muscles is important before hmm. competition. Obviously, if you're too tight, you're going to be slow. You're not going to be able to perform. But you want some tension there. I like that. It's encouraging. Tim Wong on the back of Damian Provost's golden sweep. Drops another one. A golden sweep. Two in a row. Chicago Wind has won eight points in a row in the golden game. Now, we might statistically, you might have this. I know Evan Wood, our main commentator for MLTT. How many times has a team come back from down 0-5 to win a golden game? That's a great question. I, I don't definitely don't have that, but Evan might. It's not, the t it's not expected, and it's definitely a rare occasion. That is the maximum lead you can have. It's nearly 25% of the entire game. Big shot here. I can say it now. <laughs> Andrew Tell. The counter forehand. Oh, it's a monstrous forehand. Chiseling shot. That phrase Words tonight. Words to live by. <laughs> I'm going to be lying awake in bed tonight going, chiseling shot, chiseling shot. I'm never going to say chiseling again either. <laughs> but I, didn't, I don't think you tried to bait me with chiseling. I think there was something else, right? Or was it chiseling shot? You said chiseling shot. That was the one I broke on? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I've ever used the word chiseling in commentary before. Okay. But I might start now. You can. Yeah. I think Dan, Table Tennis Daily, likes to say that. Nah, no dizziness. I feel great. I feel wonderful. I, f I normally do more in the morning. I just stopped exercising for a few days because I was feeling weak and, yeah. Dan Liu right now continuing on 12 to 7. Chicago Wind came in hungry for points this weekend. They knew that they needed it. The determination, the Golden Game has never been their thing. Yeah. Which country are they playing in? They're playing in the United States. This is the first ever professional league in USA, Major League Table Tennis. That's why the logo, I think, has all the American flag colors. A lot of other countries with the same colors, of course, but sort of has American flag vibe to it. Emily Tan is strong at the table, but Yasi Ortiz today for me has had the best performance I've seen. I haven't commentated all her matches, but today she's been very strong. Yasi Ortiz, the Caribbean queen. Oh, beautiful backhand punch from behind the table. One spin, soft shot, and then reaches out in front and slaps it back for pressure. Turbo said when we were talking about success in the Golden Game, it's actually the Chicago Wind that have had a little bit of misfortune in the Golden Game. Right now, they're looking pretty good. As I said earlier, with Coach Eric Owens, they've really been working on trying to practice the Golden Game more. It seems to be paying off. Fourteen to ten, Chicago Wind. Tag in Alex Kazaku, and it's Jay Hogberg with the serves. 10 serving 14. No, oh, the backhand counter. Adds topspin, the flex. This is going to be his signature pose. The superstars are being made, and he runs perfectly into frame. Oh, that was the coolest frame entrance shot. <laughs> we. Ooh. Oh, okay. I that rarely time look he was down. out of frame, and I was like, wait, hold on. So I rarely look down at the court. I'm almost, almost always watching the TV screen. The same thing as you guys at home, no matter where I am in the world. But if someone steps out of frame or I absolutely need to look down at the court, I will. He says, ball's broken. I'd like a new one, please. Hong Yao Zhang, our assistant umpire, gives him a new one. Multi-ball system here. Players are able to choose two wonderful points back-to-back. -back. Chicago fans in the chat. Strawberry falls short. Seattle spinners right now. Remember, they're playing to win. Whoever wins the golden game takes the team match. 
It's six more points for one team and six less than they would have had opportunity cost for the other. Team calling out the scoreboard on the assistant umpire side, which is now standing correct at 16, serving 11. Oh! Oh, oh early celebration. no! It came from the crowd! It came from the crowd! Premature celebration. A scream, and he looks as if to say, oh. It's tough when someone's supporting you because you want to be good to your fans. But that person laid out a present thorn in this footstep path. Now, now Nikhil Kumar knows he has to up his game. Timeout called by Eric Owens in the corner. This is a much needed timeout for Chicago Wind. Can you imagine if that one shout by the fan is the difference, is the crack in the windshield that will become two separate giant pieces of glass that the Seattle spinners will walk right through? Did the fan possibly just part the ocean, the opportunity for Seattle spinners to come back? They were being quite dominated after starting what? 5-0 up? Yeah. 6-2? Six 6-1, two. Six I think. 6-1 even. Went from 6-1 to 6-6. Six six. Wow. big. Of course, because Chicago Wind had golden sweep back to back. So, uh, I mean, this is the second round of repeat matches. Nikhil, he's already won the first point, so he's going to have to do something very different here. But the that Chicago Wind look good right now. Man, those backhands, the last two backhands from Provost right there. It's like the Bruce Lee one-inch punch, except he's adding spin to it. So whip-like. Oh, and a dribbler off the hurt. top of the net. That's going to hurt. Ball be gone with, says Nikhil Kumar. So 18 points for Damian Provost and the Chicago Wind. 13 for Nikhil Kumar and the Seattle Spinners. Looking for that inside outside swiping flick. It's tough. It's a team sport and there's that extra pressure to deliver for your team. But in the golden game, more than ever. Entering the arena now, Tim Wong. Looking good, back in action after quite some time. Not playing at this level. His first appearance this weekend in MLTT. 13 serving 19, Andre Lopchik with the serve. His service game has been strong. If I remember correctly, he got two points in a row off his pendulum serve against Tim earlier, yeah? Hmm. Good pressure, and Tim Wong sets up six golden game and team match points for Chicago Wind to complete what seemed to be completely out of the question from down 0-5 at the start. And they take it, Tim Wong delivers, Chicago wind. It is a wind of change out here, scorpion style in the stinging tails of Chicago wind. The tale has been told here today. Audra and Jim, team owners will be quite proud. They have climbed out of a giant hole, really? number eight in both divisions across the entire United States, the bottom of the barrel for MLTT is moving on up to the east side, and they'll come back to the east division with a much better standing. Yeah. But the understanding of what they've done here today is that they have found some synergy as a team, and the energy that they brought to the table in this golden game made the difference. I love this format. And I couldn't be happier for the Chicago Wind, who are only eight points behind the Florida Crocs at the moment. We've got one more matchup today, but here's a look at the standings. The East Division, Carolina Gold Rush, getting ever closer to that 200 mark. If they're not the first to cross it this season, it'll be a shock. Yeah, really. East Division. So, Chicago Wind and Princeton Revolution, very much in contention with the Florida Crocs. We're only halfway through the season. Anything could happen. If Carolina Gold Rush does not qualify for the playoffs, mind blown. But that last spot, all three of these teams here, Florida Crocs, Chicago Wind, and Princeton Revolution, very much have a chance to qualify. 
I remember Rogers sent a text to Flint saying, is there a point where we have zero mathematical chance of qualifying? And Flint jokingly said something like, as of today. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the case. As you can see on screen, it is very much anybody who could move on to the playoffs in the East Division. Looking down at the West Division, Bay Area Blasters tied with Seattle Spinners. But, well, I can't say for sure. I was going to say, did Bay Area Blasters play on the other table at the same time? They did not. So Bay Area Blasters, by all let's say interpretations should be first in the West Division. Seattle yeah. Spinners right behind them at number two. And in number three, Texas Smash and Portland Paddlers having a rough weekend without their head coach here, Christian Lily Rose, and uh, without Cole here as well. Mm. So, yeah, we'll see. But it'll be very interesting to see who qualifies. Remember, the top two teams in each division will cross over after 14 weekends of play we're not even halfway through the season. Today is the last day. We've got one more match to commentate with you here for the first half and the first ever crossover where East meets West. You're watching Major League Table Tennis. It's been a ton of fun. I can't wait to have you back. Time-wise, we're coming back at 2.30 local time. Perfect, so a little bit less than an hour. Eight minutes less than an hour, that's 52 minutes from now. Grab your snacks, get hydrated, get prepared. Go to MLTT.com, follow on all the social media. Subscribe to Major League Table Tennis on YouTube so that you never miss a live stream because every weekend of competition is streamed live, and I should be there. Also, we've got some free giveaways for you, so don't forget... If you follow on Instagram, at Major League Table Tennis, send a direct message with hashtag AdamCast, and you have a chance to win a free shirt. So now that we're back in our own skin, on behalf of <laughs> Matt, Hetherington, <laughs> Matt Hetherington and myself, Adam Bobro, it's been fun, and we look forward to having you back at 2.30 for Tables 1 and 2, Table 2, right here for the AdamCast. Until then, peace.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to day number three. This is session number two of week number seven, the crossover between East and West divisions. We've got Princeton Revolution coming from the East and the West Coast Zone, Bay Area Blasters in the battle that is about to happen and will end this three-day extravaganza. It has been quite exciting. If it's your first time ever watching Major League Table Tennis, you are in for a treat. There are 21 points up for grabs between these two teams here today. And here's a look at how the East Division and the West Division stand currently. Carolina Gold Rush way out in front in the East after Chicago Wind made quite a comeback to be at 130. Princeton Revolution at 127. Still a lot of points up for grabs and room for them to move in front of the Florida Crocs and Chicago Wind. Bay Area Blasters at the top of the food chain for the West Division. East Division's had the upper hand though. Seattle Spinners right now tied with Bay Area Blasters but have played more matches. Texas Smash behind them at 111 and Portland Paddlers in 104 after a tough weekend. So Bay Area Blasters looking to separate themselves, separate themselves from the pack. Princeton Revolution looking to blend in well and hide themselves somewhere between Carolina Gold Rush and the rest of the teams. I'm your commentator, Adam Bobro, and joining me, friend, fellow table tennis enthusiast, looking sharp in his Pokemon hat all the way from New Zealand and in the United States for some time, Matt Hetherington. Good to have you here, Matt. Great to be back for another round of wheel spinning chaos. I love it. So if you're just joining us, I love that we've got the Think You're Good slogan in the background here, MLTT.com for everything you need, which includes not only news updates, standings, statistics for the players, but you can even sign up for the newsletter if you want to try out. If you think you're good in future seasons, you should definitely try out. Now this wheel behind us has some challenges on it. Let's see what's there. Pokemon references, nice addition! Nice addition, Pokemon references. So every match after the second game, I think, or between games. After the second game. End after the, the second, sec game. at the end of the second game, we're gonna spin this wheel, and whatever it lands on, we're gonna do. It's gonna be a challenge for us to commentate in a certain style or incorporate something fun. I'll tell you more about the team matchup in a bit. Jean Balma for Bay Area Blasters starts off with the serves to Jean Sheen Wong for Princeton Revolution. Every game is played to 11 points. There is no deuce. At 10-10, it is golden point. One point wins it. Beautiful receive here from Jean Sheen Wong. Now each game that is played, that's a replay from earlier today. <laughs> I don't know why the first replay of every set, every uh, new team match is from the previous match. <laughs> Just for a little variety. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, so there's been a lot of heat in the arena. Just for format's sake, there are gonna be five matches. Each match has three games, even if someone wins the first two. Each game is worth one point, one team point. Except for the golden game, which is worth six team points, and the whole team plays in it. Oh, beautiful down the line here. The golden game, there's a lot to talk about. We'll talk about it more as it gets closer, but in short, you must stay for it. It is unique to Major League Table Tennis. It is a rumble that is tag team between the entire team that has played in this team match against the other team. So it'll be five on five rotation throughout. But right now, game to 11. And Jean Bao Ma down 1-3 to Jean Xin Wang. Now both of these players originally come from China. Jin Xin Wang, a new father, and his wife also a provincial player in China. After he won the US Open in 2015, it was sort of made official, I guess, the proposal. Yeah. They would later marry and have a child. But I bring that up because Jin Xin has been in the United States for quite some time. Jin Bao Ma, the much younger of the two, only in the last about three years, I believe, moved to the United States and is doing a wonderful job of learning English. He's aggressively picking it up. He's very social and friendly, and he's the number one player in the United States by world ranking at the moment. At least representing the United States internationally. In the absence of Kunik Ja, Jean Bao Ma, after getting to the quarterfinals in Lanzhou, China, Representing the United States turned a lot of heads and raised his world ranking drastically. 
And if you're in the comments section, we'll be keeping our eyes on that comments section. So welcome back. If you've been here before, any questions you have, let us know. Is there doubles? Good question. Yes, there is. Two singles, <laughs> two singles, doubles, two more singles, and then the golden game after all that. 15 points in the first five matches to be split between the two teams. Right now, three serving six. Gene Bow on the chase. I really feel like, I mean, Majin Bao played his first MLTT match in the West Division a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Princeton Revolution <laughs> ownership. <laughs> Trying to wanna, start a revolution. Really want to get in on the action. Breaking some barriers, huh? Um, I feel like he's struggled a little bit more in Major League Table Tennis than I thought he might have. I think he's probably got a lot of expectation riding on him. I mean, coming back from that WTT contender event with such amazing results, everyone was kind of like, wow, his level has, has gone up crazy. And right, and um, star contender too. So even right. tougher competition, he battled in the quarterfinals, Felix LeBron, who had become world number seven, and took him to the fifth, it was close. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's probably feeling the pressure a little bit. I've certainly seen some uh, tough matches from him even this weekend in the cross division as well. I think it also speaks to the level here in some senses that he can compete that high against the best in the world. And here in the American League, essentially, the players are strong enough that they can challenge someone who can do so well internationally. So we've got a lot of strong players here. World ranking is a good indicator of a lot of things, but participation matters. I mean, it's part yeah. of the reason Timo Bull has dropped out of, what, the top 100 in the world? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, goes for the around the net after the long exchange here. Counter loop as soon as the forehands open up. It's a chase. Clever idea from Jean Balma, but it is five game points for Jean Xin Wong. Fun fact for you in the crowd, we've got Eric Owens standing by to jump in for game two for a little chat after a big victory for Chicago Wind. Oh, and a merciless attempt, or just sort of a, I'd say, throwing caution to the wind, backhand flailing shot. Tries to flick, but uh Are you gonna no get dice. Eric Owens with the wheel? <laughs> yeah, I'll have him spin the wheel for us before you come back. How's that sound? Good deal. All right, I know we didn't get so many thoughts from you in the first game, but we'll have our time. All right. right, here we go. International signal for walk this way. Eric Owens is going to chat with us for a bit. No, you had it right. Normally when we pass the headset, we'll, we'll close the mic. So, uh, <laughs> and you have to bring it nice and close to the mouth. All righty. Nice. Here, here you go. loud and clear. Welcome, Eric. Good to have you here. Thank you. You're welcome. So for those of you that don't know Eric Owens, you're probably new to the sport or not from the U.S., but he's a U.S. national champion, a legend in the United States, a businessman, a coach for Chicago Wind, with the most awesome hat that nobody should ever misunderstand in their entire life. <laughs> Congratulations on a wonderful weekend, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, it feels good. Three out of four. Uh, we've had a tough season so far, so getting three wins this weekend has been great. We had our first Golden Game win when we came from behind, so that feels good. We made a lot of changes, changes to our lineup, changes to strategy, changes to our mental makeup. So went through many, many different combinations and permutations of what could happen, made a bunch of changes, and I like where we're at. Wow, that's a great place to be, and the results definitely speak for themselves this weekend. I don't know how specific you can get on any of those details. I imagine some of them you'll want to keep secret and just sort of milk as long as you can to make sure you guys make the playoffs but anything more you can share on those changes that you've made yeah I, I think some of it is just more mentally understanding the golden game you know whenever you're playing a, a, a 10 or 11 point game you have time to explore different things you can try different things see what works see what doesn't work um, I, I just don't know that you have that ability in the golden game so the golden game is unique no one here has ever done that it's new to me as a coach it's new to the players the, the pressure is very, very high. So having some mental techniques to be able to deal with the pressure, to understand that you need a point and you need a point now. And what are 
What are you know some of the best serves that you could do now? What are the limited options that you can give your opponent? Because you need the point and you need it now. You don't have time to explore things. So you have all of the data of the previous matches to gather as much information as possible to make the best possible decision. So we, we explored a lot of that, and I feel like it really, really made a big difference this weekend. I'll be checking in every once in a while. Everything you're saying is gold. It's great to know. And yeah, we've seen the changes. Just checking in from time to time down here. Four to two right now. Jean Sheen Wong continuing as Princeton Revolution leads. I have some questions for you, and I'm keeping my eyes on the chat too, if you have anything. Yeah, Eric Owens, definitely table tennis legend. I actually didn't realize when you stopped competing. When did you stop competing? You know, that's a question that I get a lot, and it's it's kind of an interesting answer. So, so I would say, you know, when I won the U.S. Championships in 2001, that was, you know, one of the highlights of my career, without a doubt. And that was in December of 2001. I started college in January of 2002 with the idea of and you know going to medical school and I had very very poor education I was a table tennis player traveling the world and so college was um, something new to me you know education at that level was new to me so I had to go all in now I was on a table tennis scholarship so I had to play to keep my scholarship because everything was was completely paid for and you know I had a great relationship with Christian uh, Lillerworth but my passion it really went more into school and all of my time went into school, but I still competed, but my heart was not in it. And if you look at my rating, my rating was like, I don't know, 27, 30 or 40 or something like that. And it, it fell off a cliff as soon as I started school. I was just donating points to all of USA Table Tennis. Um, so I still competed um, and I still made a couple of Pan American Games teams and World Championship teams, which were honestly surprising to me because I, I wasn't training to make these teams at all, but I think all of the previous efforts and training that I did before that still got me to a level where with minimal training, I could still make the national team. So I competed all the way to about 2008, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that my heart was fully into it. Nothing like, you know, the late nineties and early two thousands. Um, but the last official competition was probably somewhere around 2008, 2009. Oh, wow. There was one interesting piece. Oh, beautiful forehand on the step around. Gene Sheen keeping this close, much tighter score line than game one. So you mentioned one thing, and I was busy checking the comments and just keeping my eye on the table a little bit. I thought I heard 30 or 40. Did you say your world ranking before it dropped off? No, no. So my, my USATT rating was like 2730 or ah. 2740 or something got like it, that. And it. I held that rating for for a while and um, once I started school and you know my training completely it didn't stop but it was sort of like the minimum to keep my scholarship it was right. like I I was just donating points left right and center and got it didn't really care at all and so um, it, you know that's I just, was there that's for the buffet I was it, there it during was that time buffet. period yeah. do you remember this you probably don't because it wasn't significant for you but I was thrilled I qualified for the uh, NCTTA so at the time I qualified through ACUI, but mm -hmm. I came to Penn State in 2003 when Christian, I met him, and I played you in the early round. I'd never seen you, but I knew of you. You were literally a legend and just a legend to me at the time, and then you became real. I was like, who is Eric Owens? Who is, which one is Eric Owens? I've heard about him, and I saw these people hitting so hard. I'm like, that must be Eric Owens. That must be Eric. This person's hitting so hard. Oof. Well... It turns out that the most casual guy in the gym who was putting in no effort was Eric Owens. Mm. He was the guy who didn't have to try hard. He, wasn't, he didn't draw any attention to himself, and he played me in his sweatpants. <laughs> That's funny. It was hilarious, and it, was, it wouldn't have been memorable for you, but it was very memorable for me. I had long hair at the time, by the way. I do remember the long hair. Yeah, I wore a hat, like a beanie style. I don't remember paying you, playing you in my sweatpants, so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know... I don't know what message I was trying to send there, but probably just having fun. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't even think I don't think there was a message. You know, I could try to take something from it. To no. me, it might have been, well, I need to just take my time warming up. There That's you go. it. There you go. I don't think it was a personal thing. No. You, you play somebody who's rated seventeen hundred at the time when you're a twenty-six plus player. Not much need to take off the sweatpants. Period. Wow. Somebody's warmed up though. Gene Bow stepping around on this one. 
Have you had a chance to see Gene Bell play much this weekend? I have. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a great player. I, you know, watched a lot of him before I came out here uh, because I knew we would be competing against him. So I, I feel like I developed some pretty strong strategies and tactics to to be able to to play against him. And then when we put Alexander Kazaku up against him, we got a 3-0 win. Hey, you know what it is? It's golden point time. Golden point. Here it is. One point to determine the winner of game two. Gene Sheen looking for the match. Gene Bao looking to level it. Oh, and Gene Bauma takes it on golden point. So we have leveled the playing field. The battle continues. We'll find out who pulls ahead. Eric, it's been a pleasure having you yeah, here. Yeah, my pleasure. Out of respect for your time, we have a wheel to spin. Matt okay. Hetherington's coming back in. You get to determine the fate of how wacky this next game's commentary is. Let's go. All right, let's go. Commentate only in questions for a game. All right, guys. Good luck with that. Thanks. All right, I'm just getting warmed up. Eric, great to have you here. Congratulations right, again. Yep. All right, see you guys. All righty. My pleasure. All right, one of these days we'll get in the practice of putting. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Adam. How are you? That <laughs> is that a good question? <laughs> Will time tell? How are you, Matt? Is that a pigeonholing question? Is it okay if I don't answer that? <laughs> Would you not like to? I'm thinking not. If that's okay with you? <laughs> What's the score? Adam, is this going to be a massive tripping session, a trip up? Are you looking for revenge over the, the word thing, the shot? Was that a block like you've never seen before? What can somebody do to prevent that? They should really ask themselves some more questions, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> How can someone possibly say it any better? Will it be two to three after this point, or will it be one serving four? The big question here is what does Majin Bao have to do to get ahead? Was that a question? What if our director was asking for the eraser right now in the middle of this crazy rally that Jean Balma stepped around the backhand corner for? What if? How great was that rally? <laughs> Will a third ball be a key ingredient after such a shovel served that looked quite strong? Is that a timeout called by Matthias Havasson for Princeton Revolution? I was just going to ask which side called the timeout. What do you think they're saying? What do you think they're saying? <laughs> what if he's saying, focus on the short game 
control with side spin inside the table because Jean Balmaz so strong once the rally opens up and use that wide forehand corner early in the rally because he likes to step around and he's so compact with the backhand but still depends on his forehand for power. What if? It's a very insightful question, Adam. Is it? Where did you get your questioning skills from? Could it have been from questioning skills for tabletenniscommentary.com? Will they call a let for that ball in the corner? Or will the ball boy pick it up? Ball kid, ball person, ball kid. What is the average age of the ball people helping us? Can Majin Bao replicate his level from recent WTT events here in this match and in the MLTT? Would it help his cause or his power ranking within the league to do so? I think he could certainly move up a lot, don't you? Those Bohemian Rhapsody lyrics I see in the comments section. <laughs> Who will take this point after the second towel break? Where did that one come from? Could Wang Jinsheng get that ball any wider? Would it even be possible with that sort of an exchange and both players trying to stay so close to the table? Has he been practicing staying close to the table? Game points will it take for Wang Jinshin to close out this 10-5 lead? Would five be enough? Will he have to apologize for that? Seeing that he did still able to take the game in a 2-0 lead, will he get a clean sweep? Oh, that was more. 2-1, yeah. Good question, though. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've finished the oh. game, I completely forgot the time spent with Eric was uh, a real cool interview. We weren't quite as focused on the match itself, but wow, went quickly there, two to one. So dominant in game three, we survived that challenge. Nice work. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> it was tough, it you is tough. You kind of have to treat everything as rhetorical. It's like at the beginning, you were asking a question. I was like, how do I answer that with a right. question? I was like, I can't. It's like off rhymes. We're just trying to find little loopholes. What What is a question is the question. I think we, we bent a little bit to try and make it tolerable to offer some information. So, let's see here. Something interesting. Myrtle Beach Table Tennis loves you, Adam and Matt. Thank you, Justin. We love you too. Yeah, the whole crew from Myrtle Beach. It's been really cool. Thank you for volunteering and helping out here. I'm so happy that you, Matt, and Dave came out. I'm still in touch with Saeed and uh, yeah, I think, and Jason and yeah. No, I'm excited to see you all again. So hope I can make friends with many of you. You can come to MLTT Live, be completely inspired. Jason, well, Justin actually, who just wrote this, was so impressed. He told me it's different seeing world-class level play. And many of these players are either well, have been in the top 100 in the world, and a handful still are in the top 100 in the world. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to here.
So joining us now from Austria, we have Alex Chen, who's a very strong player. He's had some interesting questions about serves earlier on today. And from Sri Lanka, the greatest rags to riches story in the league. Sonora Silva was not picked for a team. He was a free agent. For the Princeton Revolution. Interesting. Yeah. So he's actually in between matches and in the evenings. He's like last night and even this morning at breakfast, he's been spending a lot of time with the Princeton Revolution. And now he's going to spend time across the table from them. I wonder if Princeton Revolution treats him like a spy who was sent to have <laughs> breakfast. He's just hanging out with the opponents. Anyway, no, Sonora Silva, that's fascinating. I forgot that fun fact. Sonora Silva then got picked up after playing for Princeton Revolution. He did so well that the Bay Area Blasters were like, hey, we need a guy. <laughs> a nice two-handed swing there over to the corner as Sonora Silva gets ready. He's such a fighter on the table. Yep. Not only did he get picked up by the Bay Area Blasters, he rose to top 10 in the league rankings. So watch him out here. He's tough to get through. And Alex Chen has been a world-class player for Austria for years. So three games to come, Princeton Revolution leading two to one. And they've got Alex Chen on the serve. Alex Chen has so much firepower on the forehand in particular. Saw him playing yesterday against uh, Tyrese Knight and just unleashing havoc on any defensive ball that he played. I think that was the controversial match yeah, that was spoken was. about. Yeah. I only learned about it just recently on break. Good combination here. The forehand coming out to play and ending the party. Corner to corner, one deep to the backhand, an exact opposite on the other side, wide forehand. That's pretty <laughs> hard to defend against. I think Sonora kind of eases into rallies a little bit, but Alex Chen is like foot to the ground, straight in. Pedal to the metal. But there are a lot of ways to defend against that. I know you said it's difficult to defend against, and that's absolutely right. Funny little pivots and maneuvers you can make from touch to spin to placement on the table to change your pace. There are a lot of different ways to answer a player who's overpowering. Power is definitely not the only skill set in table tennis. It's useful. It's good to have. It's nice to have options. That's why many have called Ma Long the most complete player in the game. Yeah. Our ball kid in the corner might be the most complete ball kid or, or the most fantastic ball kid. Have a chance. Take a look next time. I think you'll like him. A lot of people want to know, Montas, Montas, I see you. Why is there no deuce in MLTT? In some senses, I, don't, I can come up with a few reasons. I don't know if these are the reasons, but I'm pretty thrilled with the way it is. Nice follow up on the forehand. First of all, it's really intense when it all comes down to one point. I find it incredibly exciting as opposed to like, oh, it's match point uh, and deuce again. Match yeah, point, yeah. deuce again. Match point, deuce again. That could go on forever and it's exciting, but I think golden point might be even more exciting. Yeah, and we don't really have any kind of like sudden death elements in table tennis that really are all or nothing. Until now. Until now. Let there be golden point. Yeah, UTT had it in India as well. I really enjoyed working with them, always have, and uh, it's been incredibly exciting. I also think it's a little bit more predictable from a time standpoint when you're selling to TV stations. Quite a turnaround here. Sonora Silva leveling the playing field was down by quite a bit. And now 5-5, five, five, felt like 4-1. Awesome confirmation, memory confirmation. Jackson, my director, thank you. Wow. I'm going to address a question here that could be read two ways. X Killer X, welcome back. Where are you live or where are you live? If you're asking where I live, I live in Taipei. If you're asking where are we live right now, around the world on the internet, from Rock Hill, South Carolina. So hopefully that covered all the bases. 
Look at Sonora Silva now from 1-4 down. He wins six of the next seven points. And at the second towel break, you can just see a bit of deflation right now. Alex Chen looking for some answers. I mean, the trouble is sometimes when you have that much firepower, when somebody shuts it down, it's hard to find a different pace to try and come back with. Right, when you put all your chips on one square, you're like, oh, it's working, it's working. You didn't think you'd have to have a plan B. It's tough. I mean, perfect example you brought up for in the first match, Nikhil against Liang Jishan. Jishan, massive forehand. Nikhil just completely stops him from playing it. Yeah, it's not always easy to do. This is part of the reason why it's important to practice your weaknesses. Sure, you can sharpen your sharpest blades, but you need to make sure you're covered in all corners. It's what defense is all about, being ready. Table tennis is a game of adaptation. You adapt to the opponent on the other side. The game's constantly evolving, and right here, the evolution is starting against the revolution with this forehand flick. Silva just ripping that ball to shreds on the forehand kill flick shot, and he's got four game points to show for it. One save, though, Alex Chen, who loves his forehand as well for positioning, depending on that backhand in a much-needed moment. Just checking to see if there are going to be service warnings in certain moments. Tight moments, people do press their luck a little bit more. Either way, two game points saved, and Sonora Silva here cleaning his racket for full traction. <laughs> Alex Chen went over to the wrong towel box there. <laughs> He's like, oh, my towel's not in there. Memory's a funny thing. And there it is, Sonora Silva, 11 to 8, takes game number one from way down, 1 4, and then a quick turnaround. Still the first half of the game anyway, but when he decided and turned it on, he just doesn't stop impressing. I heard someone say it might have been Flint. I wouldn't bet against Sonora Silva. That's a pretty fair statement. Is your favorite player from Austria? Yeah, it is actually. It's Werner Schlager. It's figured. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, actually, my table tennis coach when I was 13, back in 2003, made me re-watch the whole final and like write a report on Werner Schlager's tactics. And it was like the first time that I'd really watched him play. Um, and just over the years, I watched him so much. And I have a lot of favorite players, but Schlager for me is like, he didn't have a particularly linear technical game but he just had so many crazy shots. Like there were shots where he'd do like forehand, like he'd just pull his racket away from the ball. <laughs> I'm gonna break <laughs> something here. And, and do like double bounce drop shots. He'd hit like massive backhands from the back of the table, round the nets, hooking shots, like, yeah. He was a thrill to watch, no doubt about it. Appreciate it in the comments section. Plans on hosting in Atlanta. None for season one, but Wichita, I think, will probably be the closest, depending yeah, on. I think yeah. so. We've got a few more in Florida coming up in the early part of season two. I know that state spans, uh, borders a lot of other states on the East Coast. Shout out to you in Miami, Andy. Continuing with that streak, what do you think Alex Chen is going to have to change out here to get back in his rhythm or cause some harm? I feel like he has to take a little bit of pace off early in the rally and give himself more opportunity through playing angles or putting more pressure on his kind of close countering game. Instead of going for the big shots early on, maybe take a couple more shots to set, set them up so that it's a, a safer option. Little fun fact, Princeton Revolution owner, co-owner, Roger, down in the corner when you see him stand up, he's touching a button on his phone to say, I want that point. He uses an app that gives him a replay so that he's constantly recording, but not actually saving it and wasting space on his phone unless it's good. Well, apparently he has over 10,000 videos in his iCloud right now. And I keep asking him what he's going to do with them. 
And uh, right now he's just adding to them. So <laughs> we'll see. Oh. oh, it came down on the table. Sonora looks surprised by that. I wonder if he would have been able to reach it. It's wonderful placement. Just changed his mind at the last moment, but didn't get held up on it. Looks like he's put it behind him now. No pun intended. I think mentally he's very much in this point. Even on that backhand, I think he's telling himself the same thing you said he should do. He needs to just play a little more safe and put spin on, not try so much power on every shot. Open it first, create the opportunity, and then come in with the power. Saved it from under the table, and it took about another four or five shots from him to find this winner. Right to the line, inside out forehand. A wonderful point there. Display of athleticism and precision from Alex Chen. He's now starting to put more pressure on Sonura to be the player who has to attack more. How did you feel about the Cho? What the body language? What's your read right now on Alex Chen? It's confident, I think. I mean, he should be confident for somebody who hits big shots. Oof. You have to have kind of a little bit of fire under you. It's funny. I felt like he was trying to get himself that confidence. He showed, but I felt like there was just this look of like he was trying to convince himself that he is or should be confident despite having a few points that were incredibly impressive. A service gift. Costly. It's human nature. I mean... It's rare to meet someone who's confident about everything all the time. To question yourself is essentially just being honest, right? Nobody's perfect. But in these moments, you want to do everything you can to empower yourself to give your best performance on the table. I feel like in MLTT, we've actually seen quite a high ratio of uh, missed serves. And I feel like it's just this new pressure to a lot of the players of the format, you know, the risk of coming down to a golden point, the team kind of being on the bench trying to push the players on. But it, I always feel it would be really interesting to compare stats. It would be a huge task, but of missed serves compared to international events or other leagues. That's a huge backhand. So much power pouncing on it. Moves in just a block there. A little more guiding forward and explodes on that last one. From this camera angle, it didn't feel like he was as close as he was from this camera angle, but he really put a lot of power on that from a step behind the table. So Mega Boyd, I see your question is uh, five game points come to Alex Chen. We're gonna have a wheel spin soon. Let's see if Alex Chen can even this out. And he does, so it's one to one right now. We'll see who takes it in the third and deciding game statistically. Sonora Silva, number six in the league. Quite impressive. Uh, there is no timeline right now, or my ETA, I don't know. We'll have to see. You know what time it is? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see when we determine where the playoffs are. But if you're keeping your eye on MLTT.com or if you're subscribed on all the social medias, which you should be, you'll find out as soon as we know Mega Boyd. And I'll be sure to share as soon as I find out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> By the way, if you think the production is impressive, thank you for that. You should check out table one when we're done. Go back and watch the live stream after the Adam cast. It's even more impressive on the main table. Here we go. There's something new on there. Oh, that's a question. Just okay. did that one. Not going to repeat the questions one. Or are we? Joking. <laughs> oh, that would have been a good out. <laughs> Pokemon. Pokemon references! I knew you'd enjoy this one. I actually put that one in there. I snuck that one in. This is almost bittersweet for me. Nostalgic and interesting. For those of you that don't know the story, I've been addicted to the game Pokemon Go for six years. At the Olympics, at WTT events, I was commentating while playing on multiple phones. <laughs> and uh, everywhere I went, I had a tray. It was just, it was actually a ton of fun. Like, you, there's never a boring moment. Uh, maybe I'm trying to get sponsorship and get back into it from Niantic. 
Anyway. Power move here. Alex Chen going for the quick attack. In this PvP, it could go either way. We're going to see who's more powered up at the moment. And a swift backhand down the line from Alex Chen. Yeah, he can't catch them all. Silva on the other side. So far in this match, Shinara Silva has had better defense than a Metapod. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex Chen not getting lazy, not falling asleep at the wheel, no Snorlax-like tactics on no. the attack. He's been much more like the Dragonite of the Princeton Revolution team. He's gonna have to restart the app and try again here on the serve. Sometimes one shot can't do it alone. It needs to be a team effort, more of a raid experience. Well, you know, the important thing in these three game matches, it's all about picking the right starter. I wonder if we're going to see any of your favorite shot out there, Adam, the Ekans shot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can call it the reverse Ekans. <laughs> or if it really kicks, it could be the, uh, the Arbok. Ah, the timeout called. Someone's sending a, uh, a remote raid pass, an invitation to a friend or a coach to call in here for a little bit of help in this battle. Well, the players are going to go back to their respective gym leaders. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> By the way, in case you're curious, I know that the scoreboard might be unclear if you're just joining us, but on the far corners of the screen, we've got the overall team points, whether you're on uh, <laughs> which team? <laughs> <laughs> the red team? <laughs> yeah, they're both red team. They team Charizard and... Uh, Why am I forgetting? Mystic is... Cyndaquil. <laughs> Cyndaquil. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always told people, I was like, I'm Team Yellow. Team Yellow? Anyway, for your sake, Bay Area Blasters on the right have two points. Princeton Revolution on the far left have three. Sonora Silva leading four to three. We'll see if this one comes down to the final seconds of this PvP. Quite exciting third game here. But if you want to see real excitement, the golden game, it's like using a pineapple berry. Everything is that much more valuable. Six times more valuable than any other game. They switch sides now. They've used their medallion to not switch teams, but switch sides. I think I saw Sonora Silva eating a rare candy on the bench. He's come back leveled up. Wow. Curious to see what he'll be incubating here on the receive. Wow. Tough to see there. A little bit of ditto like disguise. Camouflaging his serve well, Alex Chen. Oh, I think Alex Chen just used metronome because that looked like Ma Long's forehand to me, not his. <laughs> Incredible power move indeed. Let's see if Sonora Silva can power up as well and turn this around. 
Now between the two, you've got to remember, Sonora Silva's only 18. I don't have to mention numbers for Alex Chen, but he's definitely got way more XP. And a timeout called on the other side. Interesting. A little chat with the professor to find yeah. out <laughs> what's coming up next here, what the mission is for the rest of this game. Let's see if Professor Oak's going to have his revenge. So what do you think might be told to Sonora Silva right now, tactically? I think for him, it's he's, he, if he's going to play long, he either has to play really great placement or really heavy. He can't risk having Alex Chen playing full power. Okay. And then when he does get into the rally, he has to maintain pressure. I, I feel like Alex Chen's kind of played safer at the mid-distance and then just waited for that opportunity to really blitz the ball. And Sonura needs to make sure that opportunity is not presented. Got it. So we're going to be looking for some Rayquaza or some Snorlax here. Or something long and heavy. We'll see. Long oh. and heavy, like an Onyx. Onyx, there you go. You narrowed it down to just one Pokemon. I had to pick two. That was good. <laughs> You've leveled up on me. A whole lot of spin there. It does help your chances of catching the opponent. Increases them, I think, by I forgot exactly how much, but <laughs> spin is helpful. That's why you always see a spinning in table tennis. Timeout's really paid off. I feel like uh, Sonora Silva, alongside his help, you know, Alexi Doan in the corner there, mm. has done his research tasks. Oh, that's a shiny point right there. Fire blast on repeat. Wow. This one went way longer than expected after this ball was returned to the open corner. Sonora Silva, again, able to bring in that big spin, reposition himself, get right close, right next to it so that he could spin the wheel and get all the tools he needed. Good range. There was a question in there about favorite food to eat on break. Chun Mung's is a banana, which I think is a good choice just because it's good for preventing cramps. Also high in sugar, so if you need a quick boost of energy and that's your thing. It's also not processed, which is a good starting point. Sonora Silva now, one point away from leveling up. The question is, will he need any extra stardust right now? Defense looking almost 15 out of 15 on this. His healing power to come back into the table is also quite strong as we've seen throughout, but a game point saved as Alex Chen keeps on fighting. Sonora Silver on defense, moving around the court like he's using teleport. Slow spin does it. Sonora Silva, one, number one. He is the leader on the board right now. So racking up those points and power rankings. Anything else Pokemon related? Yeah, I mean, he just took down the second member of the Elite Four, right? Four singles. <laughs> <laughs>
I love it. Awesome. So we've survived. Pokemon references were fun. In case you ever tune in in the middle of something that sounds a little weird, stick around. We'll explain <laughs> why after. It's got to be tricky without context. For those of you that don't know, this wheel behind us has some fun tasks. And we'll come to you for more suggestions in the comment section. I love trying to respond to you, let you know that we appreciate having you here. So, yeah, Sonora Silva looking very strong. Once again, a win. The number six player in the league by power ratings and power rankings for that matter. The power rating is the number, the score, and the ranking is that he is six. That'll be adjusted after this weekend. So let's see. Yeah, Nyobi, I don't like to say negative things about anything, generally, if I can help it. That said, I'm not crazy about energy drinks. I think in general, natural, the less processed, the better, I think, just a general thing. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. I think also, like, caffeine is kind of a tiptoey area for athletes because it gives you such a short boost. And a lot of the times, Hard especially crash. with artificial caffeine, you come back down. And a lot of table tennis players have to keep their energy up all day. Since caffeine is not a person nor a brand, I'm comfortable to say <laughs> I try to avoid <laughs> caffeine. <laughs> it's generally a, one of many nutritional goals that I keep. So in the doubles coming up from Ukraine, making his debut here today, he's been a leader for Ukraine for most of his career. And he's a veteran player here in MLTT, still in wonderful form, consistent, spinny. It is Yevgen Prishepa joining collegiate national champion for the United States, one of three choppers in the league and a pleasure to have around. Angela Guan on the other side of the table for the Bay Area Blasters former U.S. Open champion and also Chinese player who's been very strong. I guess I saw him in 2016 take two off of Zhang Jiku in a best mm -hmm. of seven. Taowen Zhang alongside up-and-coming player for the United States, Adi Godhwani. Adi's improved quite a lot since the start of this season. I think he's really settled in. It's not easy. A lot of nerves when you know that people yeah. are watching all around the world. So in doubles, players must alternate shots. They'll signal to each other under the table what they're planning to serve and receive. And it's the only time where you must serve cross court from the right side of the table on the diagonal. Every serve in doubles must do that. Now, nice. yeah. I actually saw both Tao and Adi separately on the practice courts uh, practicing with um, Alexi Duan, who was chopping to them. I think they may have got some practice in with Tyrese as well. So the West Coast teams are lending each other a hand. Not sure why. Most of the East Coast teams want the other East Coast teams to do less well so that they can kind of creep up the table. But it's nice to see the Portland Paddlers have giving a helping hand. And Tao was warming up with Jiwei as well. It's funny. It's such a sensitive topic. But in general, it's nice to have good intentions. But to understand the outcome is yeah. also very important. Top edge of the racket here for Yevgen. Now, if you're newer to table tennis, a chopper is someone who hits heavy underspin. They chop the ball. Angela Guan, who's receiving right now on the red side of her racket, has a defensive rubber. And on the black side, she has an aggressive rubber, but she knows how to chop with it. But if she did want to attack with her backhand, it would be very difficult unless she twiddled the racket, meaning turned it 180 degrees like that in her hand for just a moment, but it's already back to where it started. Serving with the spinny side, common for defensive players. Unusual shot, uh, shot selection there from Tao and Zhang. <laughs> RPB sort of float. mini chop, float, <laughs> push from behind the table. I saw there was some confusion about the score system at the bottom of the screen. We'll explain that momentarily. Team scores on the wide corners. It's 3-3 right now. Bay Area Blasters versus Princeton Revolution. And now 5-4 favoring Princeton Revolution. And the scores below that, the smallest numbers there, 500-400, that's 5-4 in game one. Second game is the second digit. Third game is the third digit. So it'll keep track of the entire match for you so you can see how it's progressed throughout. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, Prashepa is very experienced at playing doubles with defensive players. So the Princeton Revolution have kind of leaned into this pairing. One of the things that you notice compared to other players like Jishan who've played with Angela, they get pushed quite far back from the table. Prashepa holds his ground generally really well. <laughs> Yeah, it's tricky. It's as you talked about earlier, doubles really has to do with how well you work together. If you don't set up your partner for their best shot or for a good shot, you can be a wonderful singles player and not be the first choice for doubles. What food increases mental focus? Wow, whatever Yevgen is eating right now. <laughs> no, I would say that uh, First of all, I'm not a nutritionist, and nutrition is almost the most controversial topic in the world right now. <laughs> One of them, anyway. But from what I read, what I hear, healthy fats, fish oils, cod liver oil, walnuts, um, avocados, there are certain healthy oils that are high in the, the fat that you want that are supposed to be good for brain function. So hope that's helpful. Eat your avocados, drink your cod liver oil if you want. But moderation, everything in moderation, from my mom. Bay Area Blasters in a good position here, up by three, two points away from taking this first game. First time I can recall seeing a doubles match, I mean, I'm sure it's happened, and I probably, well, I haven't commentated it to my memory, but without a left-handed player on court. Yeah, a lot of the teams are using left and right-handed pairs. Getting both forehands in the middle is a really great tactical advantage. Right. Since they have to alternate shots, sharing that space can be a big challenge, but a tight serve here as Adi Goldwani keeps it inside the table. Yevgen looking for that opening attack. Not easy with that table as an obstacle in the back. Two game points now for the Bay Area Blasters. A bit of a seesaw on the scoreboard. Oh, beautiful finish. Tao and Zhang comes running through. Has to put his hands on the back of Adi Goldwani. Almost falls into him <laughs> and gives him a little push. Interesting. It's one of those things that uh, sometimes we do, and it's tough to justify later, but <laughs> I think it's forgivable. After all, he hit the winning shot in the rally, and it's good teamwork. A lot of love there from them both. Wow, so an exciting game one in this doubles match. Yeah, Erickson, avocado. I try to eat an avocado every day. I think unless I'm, for some reason, not feeling well, I like to pour some salt, some Baja sea salt on there, sometimes pink Himalayan, and just get a spoon cut an avocado in half. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm not telling you what you have to eat. You do what you want, I believe, and live <laughs> and let live. Do what you want, cause no harm, but to my understanding, and who knows, again, with nutrition, you could find out something in a few years, you're like, ah, we thought we knew, right. we didn't. But to my understanding, avocado is a good thing as long as you're not just going crazy and overdoing it. Let's see if there's anything else here. Okay, <laughs> avocado is life. That was a quick turnaround, all right. Happy you're on Team Avocado, Erickson. Glad you're here. Let's see, are ghost serves legal in matches like these? They are legal, but much like snakes, I'd say even less than snakes, g yeah, a ghost sure. serve in general is just so tough to use effectively here. If by ghost serve you mean it would come back into the net? So here's my question. I never really knew what is defined as a ghost serve. Does it have to actually come over the net? I think so, yeah. Okay. So then if it does, to risk that, you'd probably have to hit it really high. And pros are so fast on their feet and recognize what's happening so quickly, it's incredibly unlikely to work. Since we're on my channel right now, Galia Dvorak, who's a good friend of mine and a six-time Spanish national champion, way better than I'll ever be. Oh, wonderful rally here. We were playing in China and I hit a shot that came back over the net and she started to move the wrong way and the bend on the ball made it come back and she's like, I knew it, I knew it, I dare you to try again. I couldn't believe I got away with it. So I thought, okay, so I tried again and I won the point because it hit the edge. <laughs> it was like the only way it could have possibly happened twice in a row. Anyway, yeah, so you won't see too many ghost serves at the professional. I can't recall ever seeing anyone try to do it except those little kids in that video. Yeah. And 
yeah. where you draw the line for professional. They're yeah. on a professional track. I would say the closest. Oh, wow. Nice smash here. on the attack. Yeah. I'd say the closest would be like Marlin. Like Marlin's backspin serves are really good. I know there's one really well-known one of when he was playing Jiangji Ko in the Super League. Right. And Jiangji Ko takes the swing and the ball just dances around in a circle and back towards the net. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's interesting what catches the attention of people because in some senses it was cool, but there are backspin serves that are half long all the time. Yeah. And people miss them all the time. But that one worked out in just the right way where it looked like magic for people. A big forehand, a specialty of the pen hold grip and specifically Tao Wen Zhang. If you're newer to table tennis, that pen hold grip, the way you would hold a pen, forehand, traditionally forehand, backhand. But now reverse pen hold backhand, use both sides of the racket so that there's less of a disadvantage playing pen hold. I think Sweden forced China to figure out a response to not having a strong backhand mm. in the pen hold grip. Look who's in the chat. Who's it? No. Lu Guoliang's in the chat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hi, Lu Guoliang, if you're in the chat. Good half long serve, a little bit on the longer side. No way. Matthew de Santillan is in the chat. Wow, welcome. For those of you that don't know Matthew de Santillan, you should be watching Major League Table Tennis for the rest of the season. I don't like to pick favorites too often. I mean, Shawshank Redemption, no brainer for me, but. Mm. Matthew de Santillan is spectacular to watch. He is Definitely agree. the most chopping male chopper in the league, and he's played more matches, I think, than any... Well, let's just put it this way. Whenever he's playing, everyone's like, table tennis is incredible. I had no idea. He's so much fun to watch. I became... I had seen him play, I think, once or twice before, just for little clips here and there, French stuff, French league matches, for example. But playing in MLTT, I became a massive fan of Matthew de Santillan. So welcome to the chat. He plays for Princeton Revolution. Ooh, normally with Angela Guan in doubles. But Yevgen's been getting his uh, experience in, trying to offer some encouragement in the moment right now. Good quality on this attack from Adi Goldwani. Remember, Bay Area Blasters took the first game. So right now, Princeton Revolution, they started off with, well, quite a tough season. Still not in the best position, but came out of fourth place after Chicago win volunteered to take that spot. <laughs> not perfectly worded, especially after the interview with Eric Owens. I, I love know their the way team. it was worded. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like, hey, we'll take it. Yeah. You don't need fourth? It's open? The seat? No one's sitting here? Oh, power and placement to go with it. Loads up on this one, perfectly in position, full speed ahead for Tao Wen Zhang. Still trailing by two. Interesting. Ooh, almost brings close. it back. Yeah, the effort put in by Angela to go all the way cross court on extension, and then one more even wider. Smart tactic to hit it right back at the player who just hit the ball. One of the most classic tactics in doubles. Oh, good idea. The idea was right. Angela Guan, as many choppers do, come in and flat hit. They hit to finish the point. Every once in a while, you see someone who gets into a big counter looping rally on their forehand. Masato Shiono was crazy about that. But it's 9 9. I understood the confusion with the scoreboard when the teams are on opposite sides on screen as they are on the scoreboard. For example, right now, you'll see the 10 on the lower left, which is right, and on screen, it's on the upper right. Just know that on screen, it's matching where the players are, meaning the scoreboard that's physical, the blue one by the umpire. Nine serving 10. Oh, nice scrape, and game goes to Princeton Revolution. Brushing the ball very faintly, a thin contact, and Angela Guan and Yevgen Prishepa are able to secure, pull through, and level the playing field four games apiece. That's four points apiece. And we've just played two games, which makes me think it's been a while. I mean, it's been fun the whole time, Matt, but... Uh, I think you should spend it. I've spun it every yeah, time. I that think sounds good. You should 
I'm down. Get in at least one. Okay, I'm going to spin it this way to mix it up. Yeah. <laughs> it breaks. That was quick. Uh, we already did that <laughs> one. Questions. <laughs> Should we do it again? Joking. <laughs> Matt picks a word. At we already did that one, too. Audience chooses punishment. Yeah, we did okay. that, but it worked wonderfully. It and was great. It's completely open. So in the comments section, let us know what our challenge should be, what we should do as commentators to spice things up. Let us know. Adam, go to the court and play. Would not work so well for commentary, nor for whichever team had to have me play for them. <laughs> so I'll give a voice crack in response to that. Uh, give us your suggestions as soon as possible. What should we do in commentary? Something fun, a challenge. Open to your ideas. Speak backwards only. Wow, that's really, really, really tough. I mean, to the point that I don't even know if it would la It just might be painful for everybody. We could do spoonerisms. You know how you switch the first letter of each word? Is that what a spooner is? Oh, pig Latin? Are you talking about... Huh. <laughs> Our director says pig Latin. Let's see if there's anything else here. Each chooses a side. Comments only in favor of that side. How do you feel about that? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, who's your team? Uh, I'll take the revolution. Perfect, because you're from the east. Because they're the best. That's so funny. I was thinking the exact opposite. East doesn't even rhyme with best. West does. That was quick. <laughs> Well, Debate settled. I think the East Coast have won the majority of matches here this weekend. So, statistically speaking, uh, if we were building an algorithm model, I'm getting way too nerdy about this. Um, <laughs> Princeton Revolution <laughs> should win this. We got a timeout here. There the are already three points in the lead, too. Yeah, tough times right now for the, uh, the team that's classically known for their comebacks. <laughs> <laughs> Bay Area Blasters, who have a higher position overall in the league right now, East Coast or West. They're just higher up on the team standings. Good for them. That's awesome. I'm really proud of them. Well, you know the thing about revolutionists is they always rise up when they're the underdogs. True. It's true. So back from the timeout, I'm sure that the Bay Area Blasters have a wonderful plan in mind. Didn't free work point. out. Great free point. There's going to be so many interjections. It's just like, that was great. Shh, shh. I, that was side. my bad. I broke the rules. <laughs> Wait, what did you do? I spoke when your team won the point. Oh, is that, a, is that a rule? I think it's part of it. Okay. All right. I'll let you have that. Your team did it again. Oh, 5 0. Yeah, that's about what I expected, I think. But, yeah. Interesting. I love how the Bay Area Blasters have Princeton Revolution getting overly cocky really early on. <laughs> Plan working like a charm right where they want them. Falling asleep at the wheel from 5-0 up. And one step, one small step in this long journey that will feel like nothing by the time it's over. Again, I'm not surprised. Bay Area Blasters fans, people who've done their research before today's match, nobody's surprised by this, those two points in a row. But for everyone else, just a little sampling, some foreshadowing. It hurts so bad when you're on the other side of the table. My condolences to everybody supporting Princeton Revolution right now. <laughs> Your friends, family, they were a wonderful team they really were. I only have positive things to say about them before they lost their life to the Bay Area Blasters. Oh, you know what? Shirt colors, just everything down to the shirt colors. The darker red looks great. They're out there to win. Interesting interpretation of that blood-like color for the bleeding team. <laughs> hey, the only people that are bleeding points right now are the Bay Area Blasters. Accurate assessment for the last two anyway. It's a very small percentage of this entire game. Oh, huge counter loop. Prashepa has just been so reliable. What a great pair. I mean, they've won doubles matches before. They look like they're going to do it again. 
2023. I don't know if you can say great pair anymore. Wow. I mean, for everybody else, but for us Bay Area Blasters fans, yeah, as expected. Perfection, beautiful spin, perfect placement. What more could you ask for? Nothing. That's why they did it. Oh, look, Anders is asking who to cheer for. Obviously, the Princeton Revolution. I mean, how could you not cheer for that? That's world class. In some senses, I, I would also say you should cheer for Princeton Revolution because they need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they do have six, at least six, very incredibly well-earned match points here. So cool that in table tennis you play to 11 instead of 10. <laughs> it is cool. <laughs> it's great that they play to 11 because the match is over and the Princeton Revolution have won. <laughs> this is all part of the trick. Bay Area Blasters have them exactly where they want them. <laughs> up by this match so that next time they play in the playoffs, <laughs> they're going to be overly confident. It's all part of the plan. I love this argument. That was fun. <laughs> that it was, was, it fun. was It was so catty. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Princeton Revolution fans, including Andre and Roger, team owners, and all Princeton Revolution players, you know I love you. I'm actually a big fan of the Princeton Revolution for every reason. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the Bay Area Blasters as well, though. Same, same. No, the league's been wonderful for that reason, but great suggestion, guys. Thank you to the comments section for pitting Matt and I against <laughs> each other and... Without context, if any of these players tune in to that last game only, we might get some dirty looks or a few uh, unusual comments. Oh, that was a lot of fun. And well played. So Princeton Revolution now. What is it there? 5-4. Five, 5-4. Four. Oh, five, four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like I was taunting. Okay. <laughs> this is what I want to see. This match right here. Yeah. Okay. So you probably know more about Nishant than I do. Mm. So I'll let you tell the story first. Okay. But Angie Tan on the other side, the younger sister of the Tan sisters, both of these players, young up-and-coming stars for the United States. Tell us about Nishant. Well, this is the battle of the free agents right now, which is going to be great to start with. Um, they both play, like, flat driving styles. So Nishant has short pips on his forehand. Uh, his brother was playing as well. They were like around a similar level. Nishant moved a little bit ahead, but his brother Sushant had short pips on the backhand. So they were kind of like a mirror of each other. Um, he's had some spectacular wins. Prepares really well. He's very determined to make an impression here. Um, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I was watching his warm up and I was just thinking, this is so unusual. So short pips on the forehand is unusual already, yeah. but it reminds me of when I warmed up with players who had short pips on the forehand because the first ball they hit would come right back <laughs> into the net. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, it's a warm-up. Let's just – but the thing is, if they're warming up, he hit them like full kill shots in the yeah. warm-up. Yeah, yeah, so it was quite he's understandable. I give Angie more credit than me for blocking <laughs> it back on the table. <laughs> he's a heavy hitter. I mean, he actually – two years ago in the team tournament – over Thanksgiving weekend, he beat Liu Juan 3-0. And she hasn't played since. And what it was, was a huge shock. Like She was like, for a while, I felt like the only woman over 2,600 in the United States. Yeah. Uh, she was incredible. She was That was when Lily had, broke, uh, had already passed by Ariel. And then when she faced Liu Juan, it was like, sorry, but there are yeah. different levels out there. Lily, right. you're amazing, and you will get there, but Liu Juen is just untouchable at the moment, so good for Nishant. Here he goes, making his debut in MLTT. A reverse pendulum serve. He uses the spinny rubber on the serve, as many players with pips do, and then twiddles the racket immediately, puts purple back on the backhand side. Watch for that twiddle and get ready for those forehand kill shots with the short pips. This is going to be like, I can't remember which movie it's from, but Slapshot Regatta. I've totally forgotten. They were like hockey fanatics. It feels like all those viral videos that nobody wants to watch but can't turn off where the people play that <laughs> sport where they slap each other. Yeah. 
So it's also quite uncommon that women are playing men in singles outside of the Golden Game. Only Amy Wong, Matilda Ekholm, and Lily Zhang before today. Showing a bit of patience in this point, quite uncharacteristic from what we've seen so far from Nishant. But you've seen a lot more than I have. What should we expect from him? How many different levels does he bring? He's definitely got some gears. So when he starts hitting those forehand flat shots, um, he can be pretty unrelenting. Having said that, Angie Tan this weekend has been amazing in the Golden Game. I mean, she gave Mark Duran so many difficulties with her flat hitting shots as well. And so I think they're very contrasting but similar styles going head to head here. And she's had such a great start. Yeah, this is interesting. Question here, does he play like Sean Shaona? Well, on the forehand, there are some similarities for sure. I guess Sean Shaona doesn't have a backhand rubber because she's from the generation before they did RPB. Still playing well. Yeah, I guess he plays to reference him to a player now, like Matthias Falk. Yeah. Not so common to see this style. It is rare, especially in the men's game. Good spin on the backhand, though. Not a lot of backswing, causing some trouble. Was down by quite a bit. I saw 1-4. Was it 1-5 as well? Yeah, I think so. OK. Nice string of points here. Little fun fact, Nishan told me he started playing table tennis at 13. Started. He's yeah, th yeah, he's late. That's incredibly late. We had one of our volunteers here ask, he's 18 years old, and he said, how long do you think it'll be before I make MLTT? Flint actually asked me to answer that question for him, and I thought, really? I was like, well, nothing's impossible, but it would be incredibly challenging. Mm. That said, if you need some encouragement, Nishant is exceptional. He started playing first time, to my knowledge, at 13. And at 14 decided, I'm going to take this out of my home basement. And I'm going to get a coach. Yep. So he's been training for four years and is already way better than I will ever be in my entire life. Nice backhand. I will tell you one thing that Angie could capitalize on, and this actually fits really well with the women's style of playing, playing that heavy push and then waiting for a counter. Nishant opening on the forehand is a little bit on the softer side. So if she goes after that and then follows up, putting him on the defensive makes a huge difference. Right, I think anyone who's ever played an uncle at the community center or local park knows what it's like to play someone with short pips. It's not easy. But if you can keep it baseline and low, whether it's a deep drive with topspin or a heavy push, and it's low and baseline, someone with short pips can't use their favorite kill shot. They're going to have to try and spin it up. And if it comes up just a little bit too high, that's your chance to pounce on it. And from behind the table as well, this is you see the same with Matthias Falk. It's just you have less options when you don't have as much rotation from behind the table. And it wasn't that far back, as you saw from that side camera angle, but even just that little bit makes a difference. Four game points for Angie Tan. Oh, that's one way to save one. You start to wonder, with all these flat hitting shots, I mean, this is sort of like the warm ups, right down the line. If he can make those a high percentage of the time, yeah. everyone's going to have trouble with him. But in this game, Angie Tan takes the first. So 11 to 7 in a battle of men versus women or man versus woman. The singular. I feel like the, the singular word for woman doesn't exist anymore. Have you noticed that on the internet? A lot of people are like, I am women. I am a, well, that actually makes more sense, but like, I am a woman. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I think you're a woman, not a women. <laughs> Anyway, 
Hope that's helpful to somebody out there. <laughs> what else might be more helpful is for you to know that two shirts have already been given away. We have a T-shirt contest going on right now. All you have to do is follow at Major League Table Tennis on Instagram and direct message Major League Table Tennis. Hashtag in your message, AdamCast. Winners, I want to give you shout-outs. Anthony West and Claudia Kolash. I hope I'm saying that right. A Polish last name. But yes, Claudia and Anthony West. Congratulations on your MLTT swag. I'm pretty confident you're going to like it. It's going to feel and look wonderful. And uh, you're going to be repping the first ever professional American Table Tennis League. We hope that it does wonders for the sport all around the world. Thank you for participating. And we're not done yet. You still have your chance to win some free MLTT gear. It is not cheap, not in its quality. But if you can afford it, which most of you can because you're watching this live, you can also buy one if you don't win. So try to get one for free. You know what to do. And after this game, we're going to have some more fun with the wheel. But now back to the most interesting match I've seen in a long time, Angie Tan versus Nishant. So Nishant actually had a great start to this weekend. Obviously, he's a free agent. This is his first time playing um, Major League Table Tennis. He won 3-0 against Isaac Vila. I think it was yesterday evening. So getting a 3-0 win in your first appearance is really good. And obviously, he's playing for the Princeton Revolution. So I kind of said to him, hey, this is your pathway to getting drafted. You can just follow Sonora. Right. W what if they became like the community college of MLTT? <laughs> yeah. Like nobody stays, they just transfer after doing a year or two. The revolution revolves, just <laughs> sending players. That's all they are. They're a revolution of players. Revolving door for evolving players. Now that's good news, though, because I didn't know that, and that's a big win. Isaac Vila hmm. didn't have the best start, but showed that he's really capable. I think it was against Andre Lopchik where I was like, Dang, this guy's really solid. Dominican Republic has produced their fair share of players that uh, can definitely hold their own and then some. Yeah, and he beat Amy Wong, of course, as well. He did? Yeah. When was that? 2-1. I think it was in the fourth week. Are you refer Oh, you're referring to Isaac Vila. Yeah, Isaac. Got yeah. it. Sorry, that makes more sense. Because Amy Wong isn't here this weekend, so my brain was... But now I understand. Very close to the edge after that net. But apparently there was no contact, in which case it's three all. Clever play deep to that backhand. If he's going to step around, he's not going to have as much spin. Bonjour to you in France. Tips on strawberries. Huh? Oh, that must be for Anders Lind. <laughs> he asked you for some tips first. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, it does look like strawberries. Thanks. I love strawberries. As I know you do too, Anders. Wrist. Man, keep that wrist loose. Ooh. Bit of fortune Tough there. Break. I think generally in table tennis, though, Damien would be the best example I've seen of it in this league so far. Keeping that wrist loose is very important. Hmm. And keeping a loose grip on the racket, too. Generally, I, if you hold it too tight, you slow down. You're flexing. Yeah. You lose that fluidity, that whip-like action that you really need to get the racket speed to either give you power or brush the ball. Yeah, I think Nisha generally is pretty tight on the grip. So you'll see sometimes he struggles to generate topspin on his first ball or keep the ball short by adding spin to it. But... Keeping it rigid really helps him with his flat hitting. Yeah. Nice use of the backhand. This reminds me of Matthias Falk in the sense that while well, Matthias Falk's forehand draws a lot of attention because it's less common, hmm. it's the backhand that's the safer shot. When you play with one side of your racket pips, the other side has to be really strong because you need something to fall back on if people don't have a problem with your unusual rubber. Here we go. Oh, on the first lob. Interesting. Angie was crushing it against one of the best lobbers in the league, Mark Duran, yesterday, three of four in her first round at the Golden Game. 
Welcome back, Joseph Sudlow. Good to have you here. Yeah, feel free to throw Anders some questions as well. Interesting. Have you heard him vocalize before in his matches? Okay. Yeah. Quite a lot? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't have the most common personality type from our conversations. No, not at all. So just still trying to get a read personality-wise, how it shows on the table. And there it is, 11 to five, Nishant takes the game. And he's gonna be very determined to get this third game for lots of reasons, one of which is this is his debut weekend. Angie Tan's had more experience. I mean, she's been drafted, not drafted, but she's been picked up as a free agent every single week yeah. that it's come to, uh, well, the West Coast. Oh, the wheel. I completely forgot. <laughs> That's know, so funny. It's just like, whale, whale. <laughs> I heard that. Okay, anything there we need? Okay. Yeah, good smash indeed. Yami, welcome back. Good to have you here. Former world number one. The funniest table tennis match in history involves Zhuang Zhiyuan. Yeah. And Jean-Michel Save was the leader of that dance, no questions about it. Still love watching that video. Always something new to find. But let's find something new from this wheel, shall we? Already did Pokemon references recently. Let's try again. Ugh. Good strength, good spin, nice contact. Thank you. You're welcome. Matt picks a word. Yeah, well, we already did that one. I didn't find it super exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you guys determine. I'm willing to lose for the team. No English for a game. OK. Let's OK. Try Let's try it. A lot of options here outside of English. Many languages in the world, gibberish included. Oh, boy. Wow. All sorts of animals. OK. <laughs> Hanhao的接球，他的接发球很顺的，他的下水很厉害。他已经有三个球分。你们需要记得这个是他的最后的，呃，最后的局。他们都有一个机会谁会赢这个局会赢这个这个床忘记的这个比赛当时是床这个发球是是刀宝他可以做很多的这个发球 Mio amigo, Mateo, solamente habla inglés. Entonces, ahora, allá. <laughs> El necesita hablan caput. Es es caput. En Nihongo es Neko. Conoces a Neko? Neko es miau. Este animal en japonesa es Neko. Gato? Gato. Creo que es gato. Ahora yo hablo español, mis pensamientos son en chino. Ah, este, este idioma, gibberish. Flarvniostisk. Kramsnap. Ah, Kirjabal. Hamchutstal. Schmissen auf Lovern. Chebing Kram. Ja, stimmt. 
Sham Skuplav Nevdidish. Stars Kukling. Ha Tevish Yastin, Ghostface Killer, Conscience Noblest Yavisk. Ooh, Scrafe? Hmm? Scrafe? Hmm. <laughs> you don't speak gibberish? You know, you know what gibberish is? It's anything. It's nonsense. It's, you just oh. make it up as you go. It's not an actual... You can say anything. Ay uh, we finished. You missed your chance. <laughs> oh, man. Andy that 10. That game went by so quickly, and I was like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> 11-1. 11-1, Angie Tan. Wow, remember this. Not only did she <laughs> just beat a male professional, she beat a player who just beat Isaac Vila, a drafted, very memorable star of MLTT. 3-0 to zero yesterday. I know it was a distracting task. I hope it was a I lot of fun. I genuinely didn't know why. I was like, is he doing the gibberish right now? Because whatever it is, he's just killing it. Like, Oh, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so funny. <laughs> well done, though. That was a pleasure to observe. <laughs> Thanks. Did my best. I felt bad that I forgot a few words that are... When, I, when I'm back in Taipei and playing table tennis, these words come up way more often. Wow. It's funny. There are certain words, even in English, people... I feel like in the table tennis community, people from Europe and even a lot of people that aren't are influenced by it, but they say set instead of game. Mm. And uh, Ian Marshall was always big on this because he's from a place where people say set, and he's like, no, it's game. Look in the rules. It's there. And I'm like, well, if you can say that, then I'm on your team because everyone from where you live says set. So. I had no idea, but I didn't know he actually lives in Jordan now. He's moved all around. He's a fascinating yeah. man and a legend of table tennis who knows he is a true deep well of knowledge and a wealth of knowledge. I'd never know. <laughs> My knowledge of English isn't wonderful. Coming up next, we've got the fourth singles battle. Ukraine superstar for Princeton Revolution had a chance to hang out with him in the windy city of Chicago, where the winder from, Yevgen Prishepa, and his opponent... Originally from China, has been warmly welcomed and done wonders for the United States. Taowen Zhang, Penhold Sensation. Interesting. Taowen Zhang, so fast, so strong, yet Major League Table Tennis, people often ask, how good are these players? They want to know, are they in the world top 100? Well, many of them have been. Hmm. Some of them aren't currently, but the world ranking system right now moves very quickly. It's incredibly volatile. Even one of the best players in the world currently is no longer in the top 100. And Kunuk Jha missed a year due to probation for, you know, some rules that weren't uh, followed, you could say. Which is all fair, but I just think a little bit of forgetfulness. Either way, we've got some wonderful players here, many of whom have played the Olympic Games. So first serve here with Taowen Zhang starting strong. Bay Area Blasters taking the lead in this game. A nice follow-up as well. Definitely going to see some big forehands from Tao Zhang. He is... The guy has put his body on the line these last few weeks. In the West Division, afterwards, he was like, it's going to take me three to four days to recover. But of course, then he went to the team event in Thanksgiving and played all the way through that, and now he's here again, so... He's kind of taped together, you can see, <laughs> especially in the legs with the braces. Nice turn on the corner, down the line, heavy spin. Taowen Zhang continuing to lay down the law at the first towel break. It's four points to two now. Thanks for the kind comments in the comments section. Glad you enjoyed me, Espanol. Oh, xie xie. 
我听到我的中文，我觉得我需要进步我的中文，但是我有时间。Pen holders are strong. Table tennis daily. But shake handers as well. There's a reason that it dominates the grip of the game. China still has pen holders coming up. But I think it's all part of the plan. When you have so much resource, you don't leave any page unturned. Yeah. I think other countries that were predominantly pen hold have kind of abandoned it almost completely. Right. Like yeah. I think of Korea and Japan specifically, and it's just quite rare. Romania, Kurdistan, welcome. All right. Hey. Thanks, Marsh. Good to have you here. I recognize your screen name, but the last four meta, uh, letters, I always wonder how you pronounce it. Neil B, I would say the opposite. Penholder's forehand, comparatively, I would think of as stronger than shake hands. I think that's a strong side. Backhand is usually the weaker side. I think the penhold grip heavily favors the forehand. Yeah. If you look at penhold versus shake hand against defensive players, Penhold has a huge advantage. Right. Because the racket face is always much more open. You can bring your wrist back and... Right. I almost did it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, think about it. How many choppers? Xu Xin only lost to one chopper in his entire life, and it was Chinese Super League to Ma Te. Yeah. Wow, quick game here. 11-4, Taowen Zhang. Yeah, the penhold grip also historically didn't really... It had a backhand, but if you think about it, Ryu Sung Min, right... The last non-Chinese Olympic gold medalist, 2004, playing for South Korea, who's now the president of the association, speaks wonderful English, is yeah. an awesome guy, and uh, an old friend at this point, actually. He had the fastest footwork of anyone I have ever seen in table tennis, and he demonstrated it by hitting forehands from about four feet outside the backhand corner of the table, and then the next shot four feet outside the yeah. forehand corner Crazy. of the table without being in a defensive-like position, relatively close to the table. So you have to have a good forehand and good footwork if you're a pen holder. Yeah. But now, with the pen hold RPB, there's a little bit more forgiveness in terms of footwork. You could be a little bit older, a little bit heavier, whatever you may need, because you have a stronger backhand than you used to, but the forehand has always been the key ingredient for penhold players. Oh, I want to see what that is about the ratings. I'm going to try to get back to the higher comments. Yevgen Prishepa with the serves, looking to get some revenge, change up his tactics. I think they were just asking about what ratings this counted for. This is USATT. Got it. Ratings. So... It counts for USATT ratings, but it also counts for your MLTT ratings, which are called power ratings, and those determine your power rankings. It is the first season. There will be tweaks and polishing throughout the, uh, the career, the existence of MLTT. While it is only its first season, a lot of people wonder. I can tell you it's off to a wonderful start. And while there is always room for improvement, it's improving quickly. And even if things were absolute worst for some reason, I think we'd have at least three seasons of runway from the start. But it's already gone better than that. So I think MLTT is going to be around. Oh, the backhand. Bending backhand. Taoan Zhang covering the middle, slightly weaker shot, and Yevgen recognizes the opportunity. This is pro-level thinking. As soon as you get a slower shot, move back into the table. People always ask, hey, you ever see the Chinese guys that get like 20 feet behind the table? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm one of those Chinese guys. Like, that's where I live. I'm behind the table, but that's not a good thing. You don't want to brag about that. That's where you don't want to be professionally. You want to be as close to the table as possible. It's not to your advantage to be back. Occasionally, here and there, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the signal. Blinded by the backhand. I love it. So fast. Taowen Zhang pedaled to the metal once again, holding nothing back. Oh. 
Interesting, Gordon, the American in Australia, says he's coming for you in the Fantasy League. For those of you that don't know, we've got a Fantasy League for MLTT where you can live your fantasies out by drafting your own team. And every time they compete, you can watch and see how your players grow or don't, don't succeed if they don't, but it's fun to watch. Yeah, mine's been dropping over the course of this week and the cross division has been tough to pick a team for. Right, I can imagine. I'll get in there as soon as I can. But yeah, check it out. We have a screenshot for that Fantasy League. There it is. You can join the MLTT Fantasy League. Sign up at Fantasizer.com. Spelling on screen. Make sure you put the Z in the right place. <laughs> Just know that you'll be joining a lot of good company, including the person sitting next to me, Matt Hetherington, three-time World Championships representative for New Zealand. So right now, Tao Wen Zhang up by two at the second towel break, seven to five. Thanks, Hannes, again for encouraging people to like this video. And Marsh, thanks for that. Oh, it's Mar. Just part of the native Indian. Oh, interesting, cool. Shuswap. You'll have to tell me how to pronounce it. Send me a voice message on Instagram. I'll check it out. Please take comfort in knowing that I get all of your messages. I just don't respond to, one, respond to ones. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of response, a lot of quick responses in this rally. Really impressive counter loop action. And Tao Wen Zhang staying close to the table. But that's why people back up. Because it's not easy to react so quickly all the time. Good placement from Yevgen Prushepa. Oh. Great pickup off that half long serve. And he took it early. It looked like it would have come even longer. Timeout called. A little bit longer, maybe, than. I couldn't tell what the intention was with that serve. And when you can't tell what the intention is, you could call that not the ideal play from the person playing the ball. As a commentator, we should generally have an understanding of what the intention is when someone plays the ball, which is interesting to say. Just to finish the thought about messages, if you send a message that says, hi, how are you? Please reply. Give me free stuff. Generally, I want to make sure that I have time to uh, promote table tennis and make videos and, yeah, stuff like that. And live my life a little bit too, so I'll do my best. But I do read all of your messages. So... Back at the table now, Tao Wen Zhang still up by one. That was a quick timeout. Sure was. Just a reminder, timeout is up to 60 seconds, but the player or team that calls the timeout can end the timeout as quickly as they want. And then the other player has to return to the table as well. Good practice push there on the left serve. Hey, Victor from Kiev. From Kiev. Nice to know that you're watching in Ukraine as well. Good luck to your player, Yevgen Prishepa. One point game, Tao Wen Zhang on top, but a tight half long serve there right at the baseline. A finger breaker as Prishepa ties it up. Third towel break. <laughs> Be careful, that's Tao Wen Zhang's trigger words. <laughs> finger breaker? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Okay, do you know you don't know about the broken finger scenario situation? No. Okay, so uh, in the West Division first match two weeks ago, they actually have another player on their team called Ario Monzo. He's a oh, Spanish yes. left-hander. Yeah. Yeah, and during the celebration, Tao yes. fell on his hand. And oh, it was Tao who did it. That's I was like, how? Yeah. I know what happened. I didn't know that was connected to Tao. Ah. Yeah. So Tao landed on his hand, and he really put the Ario in Tao. <laughs> Good times. Game point here for Yevgen Prushepa. If you're watching from Kiev right now, exciting times, fingers crossed. Bay Area Blasters fans, one point away from game point. Heavy spin on the second one, a safer counterattack after that blast of an opening. Looked like he hit to finish on the first, but still a lot of quality from this side angle you could really see. So you know what it is, say it with me, <laughs> golden, golden point. point. And Yevgen Prishepa takes it, the most frustrated I've seen Tao Wen Zhang in quite some time. A level playing field now. 
one game apiece. I like that he politely cleaned up after yeah. hitting the ground. <laughs> Tao and Zhang, one of the nicest guys. But it's tough in a sport where, as Enzo Angle said, you can win a point and feel like celebrating, and at the same time you can lose a point and feel like breaking a barrier. Mm. It's not easy. The pros manage somehow to generally be on wonderful behavior. So it's quite impressive. I think the most frustrating thing for Tao just then was that he set that point up so well. Like the backhand right. it was quick, it was straight into the elbow, ball came back soft. It was kind of in his hand, that one. Felt like he earned it, couldn't complete it. So now it's time for the wheel. Let's do it. Already did Pokemon <laughs> references recently. Green's the only one we haven't done. No English for a game we just did. Let's see if we can spin it on green. Purple and yellow we could do again. Yeah, I'm just so crushing it green. on the Pokemon. Come on. <laughs> the game's going to be over by the time we get one. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's so crazy. It landed on green on its own. What's it say? Stories only for a game. <laughs> stories? Man, let me tell you about stories only for a game. Well, this is my first time doing it. Once upon a time, there were a couple of table tennis players both wearing red, mm -hmm. playing on table two. Hold on, let me get warm and cozy for this one. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> well, one of them was called Yevgen, and the other was called Tao. Ooh, where are they from? Yevgen's from Ukraine. Uh-huh. And Tao Wenjang is from California. I like it. Can you do voices? <laughs> I want hey, voices. You have to join in on the story, too. I'm not telling the whole thing. But I want to sleep oh, all the night. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I chose. I guess because you were telling the story, I chose the role of child. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yevgen Prishepa. I'm going to take it a different direction in terms of stories just to give people a variety because this goes so quickly with the wheel. Yeah, small anecdotal stories. Okay. The ball kid there putting his hands up just like Yevgen Prishepa. Little bit of controversy here, not quite sure what it was. Would love to tell you a story about that. It's <laughs> funny, I have many friends from Ukraine. You've probably seen my videos with Anastasia on my YouTube channel. And I will say that I haven't given up. I will come back, I will fight and do my best. It's not over. Anyway, many, uh, Yasya also from Ukraine. And between the professionals and others, and my first ever table tennis coach, Bella Livshin. Hmm. A lot of connections. Okay. The story goes, Yevgen and I, first time we met in the league, just didn't, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't a fight or anything, but I just didn't really get to know him that much. We ended up going to a Bulls game in Chicago together. It was just him, me, and uh, Matthias Habason. We had a wonderful time. We got to know each other really well, and it was lovely. And he's got a great sense of humor. It's a little bit more British humor in the sense that, which I love and appreciate. <laughs> me too. Um, so no, he's a really sharp guy, he's the nicest guy, he's humble, he's hardworking. And when I asked him what his strengths were in the game, he's like, nothing special. Get a lot of balls back on the table. It's like, yeah, I can adapt. <laughs> super humble, super hardworking, such a lovely guy. So that's a short story that should make you really love Yevgen Prishepa if you didn't already. Oh. He just seems like a guy who really knows how to appreciate life, and I love that. You got any stories, anything? It could be about anything you want. Um, I don't know if I would consider it a story, but one of the links that I had with Tao and Zhang before I knew him mm -hmm. was that my practice partner and doubles partner in New Zealand, uh, Tang Tang, he knew Tao really well from uh, when they were in China. So every time I post something, they're always trash talking each other in the comments. Every post. That's hilarious. Ting Ting's strong. My goodness. How yeah. many time national champion is he of New Zealand? Seven. And it's a sore point for him because eight's the record held by Barry Griffiths. And the last two years, he hasn't won. Um, Who's beating him? Dean Shu actually Good beat him. For Dean. Adam's brother in law, Sophie's brother. He had a. Oh, I forgot. This year was amazing. He played. Totally amazing. Dean and Sophie are awesome. I've seen Dean far more often than I've seen Sophie in recent years. Backhand carries just long. Tao and Zhang in the second 
towel break. I've got a story about Tawan Jong. I hesitate to tell it, but uh, I think it's fair because the person who might not want to hear this, I think, is in a healthy and happy relationship at the moment. So, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> the short of it is, I'm good friends with Tawan Jong's wife, who played for Malaysia and hmm. shows up at all the matches and is a wonderful person. And her ex-boyfriend is also a good friend of mine who's an awesome guy who supports table tennis massively. And, yeah, when they broke up, eventually Tao would become the next person to be in a relationship. And so now Tao and I are connected through his wife as good friends. I mean, I knew him just because of table tennis anyway. Hmm. You can't be into table tennis in the United States and not know Tao and Very Zhang. True. But there are a lot of links in this community at the, at the highest level. Yeah, it's Ooh. a small world in this game. More specifically, his wife actually, we used to trade clothes because I was sponsored by a brand that she was sponsored by, and she had a shirt that I couldn't find anywhere else, so we traded. Nice. And if you look back through my highlights videos, since this is on my channel, the 2014, the best of 2014 video, you can see if you can find it. It even has her name on the back of my shirt. Oh, my mom's here. Awesome, Mom. Thanks. We're in the middle of story time. Perfect timing because you're my mom. It's game point for Tao and Zhang. And he takes it. Oh, story time doesn't have to end. There are no rules against <laughs> it. I just want story time. This is basically my life, right? I just collect stories so that I can chat with other people and hopefully leave them something memorable or impactful to, uh, to have in their pocket whenever they want. I like that. I love hearing stories. That's one of the reasons yeah. Ian Marshall's so amazing to yeah. sit with. A lot of people. I love a good storyteller. My favorite directors, film directors, Stephen Chow, for example. But yeah, I mean, anyone who can tell a good story is going to be uh, a welcome seat at my table, always. But my mom is here in the chat. I'm so happy you're watching. Hope David can join you as well. Yeah, Anders, that's right. Neil B, thank you so much. We're getting into the golden game, so... Matias Habason is there, who joined us at the Bulls game in Chicago. And Maggie Tien, who's married to Joe Sheen, the personal coach of Adi Godhwani, who's also a U.S. national champion and an Olympian in teams. Interesting. I saw Adam explain it. Maybe they mean golden game. Okay, mm. so what you need to know is right now they are basically poker playing. They're playing their cards strategically. They are choosing. So the losing team, who's only down by one, Princeton Revolution, is going to start 0-1 in a game to 21 points. The golden game is worth six. Six points. And it will determine the winner of this team match. Bay Area Blasters are either going to win 14-7 or Revolution 13-8. You cannot split the golden game. There's no 5-1, 4-2, 3-3, none of that. It is six points to the winner. So it's massively important how a team plays together. And nowhere in life does anyone have this experience to rest for an hour and a half, yeah. come back in, play three points, play four points. They'll only play three points for the first three points. And then when there's a total of four points on the scoreboard, Jin Xin Wang, the U.S. Open champion of 2015. Go back and check that out later. It's super hot. Versus Tao Wen Zhang, two players who both come from China and have been warmly welcomed in the United States where they've done wonders for the sport, all their students, and teammates for that matter. After those three points are played, Angela Guan, U.S. collegiate national champion, will battle against Angie Tan. The women have faced off. And it'll continue rotating through every, pro every four points until one team has 21. This is the golden game. And a service gift on his first serve. Well, he's got a little bit of credit. That's tough. After winning, what, an ultimate golden point the other day for Princeton Revolution? Yeah. Oh, man. The backhand down the line. But Tao Wen Zhang with a great answer to what didn't seem to be an easy question to respond to. I'm really interested in the order. It's such a big shakeup from the singles. 
America, all different players facing off against each other. Now, so. one question people might have is, how is it fair in terms of the order? Whoever picks first, the other team, that coach gets to pick one and two. And then the next team responds with their second and third and so on. So it's very balanced. Angela Guan, the chopper, doing what she does, chopping and waiting for big opportunities to attack. Just long, though, it's Angie Tan who times it well and places the attack. Backhand right into the body, the middle. Smart play. Don't attack two in a row if you don't have to. Attack, then push low. Bring the chopper in and attack right to the middle. Oh, but the attack, awesome. Angela Guan, perfect placement. Tomahawk served, then the follow-up. Nice float chop. She didn't really come into it with a lot of racket speed, and it set up the popped-up ne next ball. Wow, a little Amazing premature. Defense. Yeah. Outstanding, even out of frame from way back there. Angela Guan from the wide angle, still tough to contain. And Amazing. Angela Guan with another point. This is big for Angela. She's kind of struggled in the Golden Game quite oh, a bit recently. Well, recently she's picked up a little bit, but she definitely had a nightmare experience that wouldn't be forgotten. It's the type of thing you wouldn't want to have to have on a Sunday. But for her, I mean, she did. But a great performance here. Now you have Gen Prishepa. A little help from the net there against Adi Goldhwani for the Bay Area Blasters. Adi Goldwani, another player who's improved a lot since the start of the season, much like Angela Guan. And Yevgen, to memory, does quite well in the golden game. Yeah. Five points apiece now. Smart play, gets him to lean. This is what the middle is all about. Hit the opponent in the elbow for the arm that's got the racket attached at the end, and then get that player to lean, and it creates an opening. Clever idea. I don't think he can regret that. He saw the opening, he took the shot, it just didn't come down. If it does, I think that's a clear winner. So back and level at six points apiece. Comment section, feel free to keep them coming. We'll try to get back to them later. But during the golden game, there's just so much intensity. The Alguetti brothers are not playing right now. It is Alex Chen and Jean Ma on the receive. Strong receive, the step around forehand. This is a pretty interesting style matchup because Jim Bao plays generally quite soft. Alex Chen has a ton of firepower. It's so funny you say that. I'm happy to have your insight on that. It's a good reminder because Jean Bao sometimes plays shots that just completely wipe your memory and you're like, dang, this guy's fast. This guy's powerful. But yeah, generally his touch game is incredible, his short mm. game. Wow. And not power, but placement, serve. So tough to receive, that reverse pendulum. And that's what half long is all about. Get a player to play defensively from the baseline or swing for an attack where they don't have much comfort to actually contact the ball. And he takes all four. It's interesting to see him come out here and he kind of almost has a totally different mentality in the golden game than he does in the singles. And the golden sweep there, delivering big for the Blasters. Now Nishant back with Sonora Silva on receive. This is big. Nishant did not have the most ideal showing during his match against Angie Tan, who powered through. But a powerful forehand. Watch him twiddle the racket. He's trying for his bread and butter. For those of you just joining, Nishant in the solid red shirt, closest to you right now, the taller of the two players, Lebaka. First time I've said his last name in this broadcast, I think. Has short pips on the black side of his racket that he usually keeps on the forehand except for when he's serving. What do short pips mean, Mom? Flatter hitting, less spin. 
And for anyone else who's not competing in table tennis, the shorter the pips, the more aggressive you can be. The longer the pips, the more defensive, the less spin you can put on. But the most spin you can put on is what most players are using, what we call inverted rubber, where the pips are inverted into the sponge. Everyone on court right now using inverted on both sides of the racket. Nice change of pace there, Jin Xin Wong taking the pace off when he noticed that Tao Wen Zhang was just a step behind, his body weight carried him back. Very clever play. The speed from Wang Jin Shen. It's funny, I've said it that way my entire life with the American League. I've changed it up a bit, but doing very well here in the Golden Game, brings it back in to two points between them. And right down the line, Tao and Zhang on the step around. I guess it's been a personal preference thing. Just asked him before the season, I think, but it's either way all good. <laughs> Check out that Stephen Chow film. Oh, the open table! Tao Wen Zhang is not looking. He could only tell by the reaction of the bench. Put this one in the highlight reel. I think from the time he contacted it, he knew it was coming down. He's like, did it? Did it? It did. I love it. The seal dive lays out a picture-perfect finish, and it's 14-10 to 10 for the Bay Area Blasters. Angela Guan back with Angie Tan. Flat hit and the lob comes down. She had trouble against the lobs earlier, but just long. She only really had trouble against that one lob from Nishant. But way behind the table, Angela Guan able to get a lot of balls back in play. 10 serving 15. Ooh, edge of the racket, side of the head. She's fine, just the open eye typically, bothered by the ball. I was a little surprised Angela put that topspin on to mix it up. Typically for a chopper, when they play topspin, unless it's an aggressive shot or really deep on the baseline or really high lob and deep on the baseline, the attackers know what to do with that topspin coming in. But much better aggression here, close to the table. Uses it to play baseline and then go down the line. This is what a chopper can do when they attack and what they should do. Well done, Angela. I feel she always plays better in the golden game when she's trying to look for opportunities to attack more. Whoa. And fulfilling the prophecy. You're a smart guy and she's proving it out here, looking for the attack, finding it, and going for the angle. Angela Guan just getting better and better. She's a working professional. Most of the Americans playing in yeah. this league are either retired players and coaches or young up-and-comers. Angela Guan's right in between. Speaking of in between, Adi Godwani right into the middle of Yevgen Prishepa. Bay Area Blasters up by five now. Second serve for Yevgen. Edge of the racket here. Tries, sees the serve. Not a bad chance to take. One and one serves with Adi Godwani. Good setup, gets a passive receive from deep on the table. And again, it's tough to keep the ball short. So Yevgen tries to put extra spin on it, but the perfect read from Adi Godwani. Two and two, they split. So not a bad finish here for Yevgen Prishepa with that flick inside the table. Now coming into the arena, serves with Alex Chen from Austria and Jean Bao Ma from China, representing USA internationally now on the receive. How you feeling right now, Matt? I feel like my Jean Bao's done a really good job in this matchup in particular. Looks like it's going to force a timeout. So both sides have a timeout in the Golden Game. Those are part of the rules. Each team is allowed three timeouts. 
lean this way. Three timeouts, and only two of which can be used before the golden game. So that means each team can use at max one timeout per golden game. Look at the comments quickly. Danny C. Miller. It looks like a picture of Danny C. Miller Jr. there, which makes me wonder if it is Jr. Either way, the question will be answered. How long till next tryouts? Good question. I'm going to say coming up over the summer. Who knows, maybe it'll be a month, two months before the next season, but the season started in September this year, so I expect it to be around the same time next year. But the best way to know is to sign up for the emails hmm. at mltt.com. Well, that was cool. There it is on the screen as well. You should be following everything MLTT has to offer for news, info, ball kit. <laughs> Gene Bao jamming it, playing a little bit more elbow-centric for Alex Chen on that forehand shot. If it was wider, it would have been more comfortable for him, but now it is golden game point six times over and team match points as well. Not so fast, one saved by Alex Chen. Stick around for a few minutes, we'll get through some of the questions after. But the golden game continues Golden game point, Jean Balma. That serve is so tricky. Reverse pendulum once again. And he does it, Jean Balma in the Bay Area Blasters take it 21 to 15 on golden game. So they started with a one point advantage and they end up with the major advantage, 14 to seven in the standings. So the Bay Area Blasters, if Matt and I were still playing our pick a favorite <laughs> thing, I would really rub it in right now. But I love all the players here. I love all the teams. I love the Bay Area. And I also love Princeton, New Jersey. We'll have New Jersey on the list for places to go. If you want to see MLTT live, go to MLTT.com and check out the schedule and see when we're coming to a theater near you. We've got a lot of big cities showing up. Here's the standings right now. Carolina Gold Rush. The big old 182 up there. Florida Crocs below at 138. Princeton Revolution now in third place, which puts Chicago Wind after a very successful weekend going three of four back in fourth place. Princeton Revolution spent so much time there. They've dug their way out. I don't think they ever want to set foot in a grave again. <laughs> but top two teams from each side, each division will advance. West Division here, Bay Area Blasters Way out in front, not quite as much as Carolina Gold Rush, but 143 to the Seattle Spinners at 129. Texas Smash, 18 points behind, a bit of a way to go, although they were in fourth not long ago, and right. it was Portland Paddlers that really had the roughest deal this weekend. Yeah, and it's also the second round in a row. Uh, I think they went zero from three in the West Division, and uh, now they've had a pretty rough run here without Cole and without Christian Lillerus as well. Well, that's absolutely well said. Perfect timing, because look who's here. Félix Lebron. Bonjour, Félix, mon frère. Wow. For those of you, I mean, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you must have seen it. The world's best 16-year-old. Uh oh remaining schedule you can find online, but there it is for two more seconds on screen. Davy, Florida, Portland, Oregon. It's all there. Find it online. <laughs> <laughs> These comments, my goodness. Yeah. The schedule is amazing. I'm checking it all the time. Come meet me. I'm excited to meet you. Come play table tennis. Meet the stars of the game. I hope, Felix, you try out for the second season and That'll can make it cool. whenever you can. Dima's already expressed an interest, so you don't have to be here every time. That's the way it works. Every team has eight players and can hire a free agent, so if there's any conflict with league or WTT matches, free agents have done well. Angie Tan doing wonderfully this weekend. Sonora Silva already a star in our league. Was number six and might even move up after this weekend to be top five. For those of you that don't know Felix LeBron, he is the best pen holder in the world right now. Last I checked, he was number seven. I think he's got to be somewhere right around there. New rankings coming out every week. But the LeBron brothers, stars of France right now. I expect to see them in Paris in 2024 in the singles, but either way, they'll both for sure be there in teams. So let's take a look here. Anything you want to add before we get to the comments? No. Well, oh, I mean, speaking of Felix, we have a shortage of pen holders in the league, so 
That's right. If you want to do some pen hold promotion and representation, this would be a great place to do it. Felix, one of the few non-Asian pen holders in the world. So, or at least at the professional level. The professional level, we don't see too many. Rodrigo De La Noche, I see you. The Brazilian pen holder with the formerly long Vega red hair, but it's been a while. Okay, we'll get to this really quickly. First of all, if you think you're good, as you can see up here, try out. You should. You never know what'll happen. You have an amazing day. You got a lot of time to practice. And if you don't make MLTT in the next season, for some reason, if you're close, you could be a free agent. You never know what happens after that. And if Felix sure. LeBron plays, there will be a lot of free agent usage because we know he's going to be busy with international tournaments. Congratulations to you, Deepika Rodrigo from Sri Lanka, the mother of Sonura Silva. Really well done. Okay, do I play kings? I don't. Unless I do and I don't know what it is, but usually I know what I'm playing if I'm playing. Yeah, a lot of big names dropping in here to say hi. Thank you for coming out from Jean-Michel Save, Anders Lynn, Felix Lebron. It'd be cool if all of the top 10 came here. It would be great. I mean, because of my job for the last 10 years, it's I've spent more time around the pros than anybody in my life pretty much. Right. So thank you all, friends, for coming out. Let's see, Matt, a question for you from Mark Santiago. Squero, always. Nice. There it is, answer to the question. Adam, I am better I am better than literally all of these players. I love the confidence. <laughs> come show it. Actions speak louder than words. I hope many of you feel that way and come out here and prove it. You will be a star immediately. Luca, we are thrilled to have you try out for next season. And it will be very disappointing if you don't after all the confidence yeah. you bring. So please, <laughs> please do. That would be the best story. YouTube hater. <laughs> YouTube commenter. Proves the world wrong. Shows up. Takes the world by storm. Gets the biggest contract. Nike starts investing in table <laughs> tennis as their star athlete. Luka Perkovic becomes the world number one star through MLTT. Luka, we're ready for you. This is screenshotted and documented. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Mega Boyd, Boyd, great to have you here. Thanks for your participation in the Atomcast. It's been wonderful to have you here. It's been really fun. Thanks to the entire team at MLTT for giving us the chance to do this Atomcast. I know I speak for myself, but it was so much fun. Yeah, this the, the has wheel. been great. Jackson's been a wonderful director. Luke, for the non-smelly blanket <laughs> and everything else, your tireless efforts, the whole team at MLTT has been wonderful. There are too many to mention, but MLTT is a wonderful team. If you want to help out, just know that it's a ton of fun to work with this crew. You should. Go to MLTT.com, and whether it's trying to volunteer as a ball kid or showing up when we're in your city or looking for a job, if you have something to offer, some people say they're not hiring. Everybody's always hiring if it's worth it. If you can prove to someone that you're worth it, everybody is always hiring. There you go. So thank you to everybody, Flint Lane and the crew. And right now, head on over because another golden game is happening on table number one. If you're not subscribed to me, please do. And while you head over to MLTT right now, Major League Table Tennis on YouTube. Subscribe to them, too, so you never miss any of the action. We're only halfway through the season, and we'll see you on table one. So on behalf of Matt, <laughs> on behalf, <laughs> you're wearing a hat and your name rhymes with hat. On behalf, on behalf of Matt Hetherington and myself, Adam Bobro, we look forward to seeing you real soon. See you at table one. Peace.